Welcome to NBNR, the authority on unfiltered opinions and authentic player insight for Nebraska athletics. Connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, and at nbnrpodcast.com. We have a saying, no block, no rock. You know, we just really love Hunter. He's a junkyard dog. Hey, Kenny Bell ran up to me and like, you know what you just, what you just did? <laughs> you get mad. Would you go get in the portal and go to another podcast? You know, usually dumbbells are in pairs. They had five dumbbells. <laughs> hey, gone it, Muhammad. G-B-R. Got it. Bang. Nailed it. Finger twitching on the top of the button. <laughs> waiting for He's it. He's just waiting from the queue, baby. <sighs> Go Big Red, indeed. No block, no rock. Season three, episode 36. Good got job. it. That's two weeks in a row. Two He's got the episode number right. Shut up. He yeah. didn't right. fuck it up. Shut up. You know, I remember because a Wu Tang entered the 36 chambers. Anyway, <laughs> not that you guys care about that. <laughs> hey, Connor's not with us today. Connor would have loved that, and he'll hear it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Throw it up. <laughs> All right. We are at the Nebraska Brewing Company in their tap room on a Monday, enjoying some high quality, award winning brewskis here. I myself drinking a tall, very tall Hefeweizen. The Eos. The Eos Hefeweizen. Great that's, beer. That's the best beer on tap, in my opinion, guys. If, if you guys like German beers, or if you like beers that um, taste good, get that one. Okay. I like, t- <laughs> I like tasty beers. Oh, look at that. Cheers, look baby. at that. Hey, there you go. There we go. Get that Hef. That'll be maybe second round when you guys. Yeah. Or actually, hold on. Third. Hey. Third well, round. Hey, Wait, hey, fourth? Hey, who's counting, right? <laughs> hey, we're not, we're not counting beers here. Again. Hell no. If <laughs> I did that, I might get in trouble with my wife. We just need to, listen I sometimes. Need to count your beers because you're driving. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll get to you guys last because, hey, save the best for last. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Michael, what you got, brother? I am drinking the cold beer cool. cream ale if you guys look up it's the most badass logo on any can it's an eagle flying over chimney rock just <laughs> like that shit is so cool it's got cool label the actual can it's like holographic and shit so like you know collect it like a trading card it's gonna be it's it's awesome i'm gonna get one of those for like my luggage and for our podcast equipment mm. i'm getting a label because it just looks cool it's great beer i would love to drink the hefeweiz and i probably won the on the second beer but yeah. this is uh this is one of my go-to beers yeah. Kyle, what are you drinking? I've got the Ale Storm. Oh, he's getting a... It's a trend. Yeah. It's a trend. <laughs> it's a trend. I usually switch between Taco Vesa, Taco Vesa, and then I also switch between like... Uh, what, what's the other one? Oh, Squeeze, Squeeze the Day. But coming soon, the NBNR beer. Yes, we have our own beer on oh, tap here. Nice. It is called the No Bach, No Rock. It is a, it's kind of like a, a Shiner Bach, no free plugs, but well it's done. like a Shiner Bach. Listen, uh, like it, it was some genius marketing coming up with <laughs> yeah. that shit right there. Yeah, yeah. It is coming back on tap to a brewery near you, this one, 108th and Harrison, Levis, Levis in Nebraska. Atta boy. Atta boy. Uh, well, Kyle, I mean, you're, you're switching it up. Let's throw it over to these guys over here. Yeah. Who are they, Jared? Well, we got so, so a couple guys, not every guy. I thought we the, were going to get every, every guy on, honestly. There's like seven of us in like <laughs> three different states, right? Just think, the right best now. ones. <laughs> the true Nebraskans are here. Yeah, I, I think we'd agree with that so far. You guys have been you guys have been really cool coming in here, yeah, having a, before we get on air, have a few brewskis, yeah, talk yeah. about what we do and why we do it. Yes. And honk, red cast honky. Yeah. What, you, what you drinking over there, brother? I am drinking uh, the Melange Trois. Oh, no, the Melange Trois. Yeah, yeah. I've never had that. Make this sure is outstanding. It, right? It's one of the top two hundred and fifty beers in the country. Connor no, told you he made Connor, sure to tell you that. No, no, no. Oh, it's no, the, the world. world. In the world. In the, world. In the whole world, which basically means the universe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless there's a planet, another feel, planet is brewing beers. Taking, Certainly the solar system. I've bastardized what Connor told me. Yeah, no, it's a top 250 beer in the world. 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 So, uh, it's yeah, this huge. Is the world is huge. <laughs> Jeez. Like a nuclear bomb, the Melage de Trois. And, and I got I to say, oh. uh, I'll give a shout out to Brewmaster Bill. Uh, on our show, he's he's made us some drinks before. Yeah, there's some beers that that oh, yeah. uh, we had. Yeah, yeah. Um, a few years back, he would love this. I, I wish he was sitting right here because oh, he he, he's big into home brewing, and he would should have brought absolutely him. Absolutely love this here, Nebraska <laughs> Brewing Company. You guys have been awesome. Uh, we're gonna tweet out some of these photos and everything here. Uh, this love has, it. This has been a lot of fun so far, and we got here at two o'clock, so we've we've had fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we like. Yes. Hey, he's like, what time do you guys start? Oh, well, six thirty. It's like 5.05, and they roll, hey, we're here. <laughs> These guys came here for two like, things. We weren't even. Drinking beer and drinking beer. Oh, and then there was like a podcast they're going to come on to. <laughs> yeah, we weren't even like here yet. Like, they were waiting for us. Like, oh, shit. We didn't right. have our shit set hey, up. Or anything. 
hey, I, I respect it. Like, <laughs> hey, I said free beer. They came early. <laughs> like, should we go early? I'm like, well, it's at a brewery. Yeah. 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 Uh, is that a question? <laughs> but that's not even open yeah. to the public. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Okay, well, hold on. Let's not get nuts here because we had Honky Go. Red Cast Mac, what you got? Oh, I've got the Bessie, and there's another part to that name. Bessie the, the Sugar Mama. Bessie Sugar Mama, that's nice. And yeah. This is Dang. delicious. Um, I'm a I'm a dark beer fan. I've never been an IPA guy. I, just, I don't know why bitter. They taste like pine cones, right? I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm always trying to convince myself I like them and saying I taste things that aren't bitter, but it's always just bitter to me. <laughs> this stuff, though, is amazing. This is amazing, so... Awesome setup. You guys have been awesome so far. Not so far. I imagine. Okay. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like. I feel like. I feel like no, this is when it turns. This is a lot yeah. could change. No, that's beer three. And, <laughs> and, okay. and, and now we mute their microphones and it's just us three. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for coming there in. There uh, you go. Sip your beer and watch us talk. <laughs> Sometimes when the lights come on, I don't know. Something, something just changes. Something changes face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, come to the brewery. The Tap Room, 108th and Harrison, like Mike said, in La Vista, Nebraska, 68128. Nice. It's very nice. Nice. All right, guys. Well, we could run through an agenda here, but before we get into a agenda or too deep in anything, we want to acknowledge uh, Cole Pensick, mm-hmm. who unfortunately perished in a car accident this weekend. Um, he played for Nebraska from 2009 to 2013 on the O-line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know... Like, just six months ago, it was Mark Polanyi that suffered the same oh fate gosh, and right. also passed away. Yeah. And then you think of Sam Fultz, and it's like, Jesus. Like, all those, like, Polanyi guys, well, mm-hmm. Polanyi guys. So, yeah. And our, our good friend Sam Hahn tweeted out something this week, and he's like, you know, it's like, it's not cool losing your, your teammates and your brothers, you know, and, and so... You know, just uh, we've had a lot of guys on that have have probably played with Cole. We've had a lot of offensive linemen on the podcast, and so yeah, our condolences go out to the the friends and family that are affected by that. And Husker Nation, of course. And I mean, I mean when you strap on the scarlet and cream, you usually pretty much become part of the community for sure. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I know that you guys actually know Cole and his we, family. I don't know if you guys yep. want to talk about we, that a little bit. We coached Cole in sixth and seventh grade, and and eighth grade. I was still the I was the AD. I wasn't coaching him that year, but I was the AD of the the program, the Elks program. So Dan his dad he coached with me for two of those years and i've known the pensics forever bev i worked with her for a number of years as well in lincoln uh great family just an amazing family number one so you, you hate to see this happen for for all those reasons we have way too many things that are close to us with this uh, yeah. it's, it's at st isidore's in columbus mm-hmm. where i went to school growing up that's where the funeral is going to be on friday but um you know, if I can say one thing I, I remember about Cole at that age, sixth and seventh grade, when you're young and you're playing, a lot of times, especially on the line, you want to be a defensive lineman. Offense isn't fun. And he didn't want to play, <laughs> he didn't want to play offense. But uh, he was a, you know, he was a killer on defense. And we started, you know, the first couple games, you're just getting your feet under you. But kind of by the third, fourth game, we started doing some traps and doing some counter sweeps. And uh, Dave on the on the Redcast, Dave was also doing video for us. So he'd videotape some games and then do an end of the season, you know, highlight. Husker Vision kind of video, and there was one by the I think it was the last game of the year. We did a counter sweep, and Cole leads on it and just you know destroys this guy. You know, takes the end and just blows him up. And he's got his hands up in the air and he's just cheering. and And those are the memories I have mm-hmm. of Cole at that age. And uh, then to see him later in life, going on to to Nebraska, how proud his dad was. His dad was a black shirt there in the in the seventies. You guys had McBride on the show. Uh, he would talk to me about McBride all the time and and what it was like to play for him and good friends with, you know, Barney Cotton and everything. So um, it was just, it, it's just, it's a very sad mm-hmm. thing. It's sad to see that Pliny, the same thing mm-hmm. happened with him too. And, and just the irony of all that faults. Uh, yeah, it's just a terrible thing. So yeah, deepest sympathies to the family and, and, you know, our hearts go out to them. Um, it's tough loss, tough loss on, on a holiday. It's always, it's always rough. So um, they're hurting and, you know, just know that we all care about you and, and, yep. and wish you the best. So, I mean, yeah, it's hard to, Put into words. I mean, you can't. What do you say besides what you guys just said? I mean, sympathies, thoughts. Yep. But um, yeah. Moving on. Moving yeah. on. Moving on. Yeah. Um, and the red cast. You guys are. Do we say the OGs of like oh. Husker podcast? <laughs> yeah. I would say. Come on. We're I mean, we're certainly old. <laughs> 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 now, now, Mac, you were kind of telling me, you know, you were off talking with Connor and I think Mike. Mac was like, Honky is like the heartbeat. 
He oh. is the the lifeblood. I, oh, for sure. I, can, I and, always you know, can tell that. And he's not nodding or anything because he's very humble. He is very <laughs> humble about it. He's, he's very, very humble. humble about it. But he probably doesn't throw it in your face like, oh, nope. what the heck? Okay. He never... <laughs> my man to the right here. Mm-hmm. He, well, I'm not going to blow tom- so much smoke, but oh. one of <laughs> the best you. guys in in the world. Nicest, most accommodating, um, generally good dudes, and... And he never throws it in my face. Like I, I, it's pretty well known. I threw a fit after the Illinois game and quit for. <laughs> he, he was stomping his feet for the <laughs> longest. And Matt never got mad at me. He never, he never got pissed about any of it. He was always like, "Nope, dude, I understand. Hey, if you want to come back, it's it's always the red cast with you. You know, it's like you can come back anytime." And I'm like. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> Have we won any games? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> Have we won yet? Yeah. Well, come on when Tom Osborne comes on the show, and only then. <laughs> right. And by God, he got Tom Osborne. Rob got him. Yeah, got him. well, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So, no, um, heartbeat, the gas, mm. brakes, uh, the blinkers, you're the whole show. Been, you know. I don't mind riding along. You're the, you're yeah. the, are you the windshield? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> you're the one that takes all the bugs. I'm, and like, the- I'm like the ad lib guy. I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah. And when uh, shit goes mm-hmm. wrong, it breaks. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. you're the Hank, you're the Hank Hill. You're the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, honky. Damn it, honky. <laughs> you damn it. Your head's getting large. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you're not boom Howard, are you? Yeah, <laughs> dang old, can't dang old honky. Son anymore. <laughs> Well, dang old honky, you can go on to the Rick kid. Why you would, how you found out the dang old podcast? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Boomhauer, king of the hill. Come on! Oh my gosh! Well, honky, just get into like what it's been like, everything that you've done. How have you gotten Redcast to this stature of Husker podcast? Like, give it, just give us all the the dirty details. I think, uh, well. One of it was we just wouldn't quit. Like, you stick around long enough, you just keep, you keep gaining. Quit. But when we started, um, <laughs> like the OG, I still think, when I think of OG, I think of like Husker Podcast, the Husker Fan uh, Podcast. Uh, uh, Mike and Justin, those guys uh, started a year before us, and, and uh, they were very helpful when we were starting off. We started off with the Big Red Cobcast. And I was telling you guys before we went on, we did zero market research because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and we start up, and we're like, okay, we'll call our – First thing I said was we'll call ourselves the Platte County Boys or something like that. And I, <laughs> and I had this design. Thank God, like like you guys have a lot of talent here with what you're doing, and we have a talent. We have talent. Dan, uh, our graphics guy, he's the one that came up with the idea of Redcast. Go big Redcast. And I'm like, what the hell's a Redcast? That does that word doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. But Dan, Dan's like, we're gonna go with that. Not the Platte County Boys. He comes up with the design and everything. And then he comes up with this. There's like a, a microphone with an N on it. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is good. Everything looks great. Let's go. The first podcast I ever listened to in my life was us, our first show. <laughs> and I was like, this is great. And about a month in, I'm on Twitter and I'm looking at, what the, what's this big red cop cat? Oh, they've got like 6,000 followers. What are we doing? We copied everything uh, they yeah. did. <laughs> And, and to all those guys, they were amazing to us. They were very cool early on. And, and, and that kind of helped formulate, I think, a little bit of us. Like you guys were mentioning, you know, we retweeted you guys early on. And I like to do that with everyone. I, 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 I love the community. I think I want to give so much credit to what you guys are putting together with this August. Um, the, the, the podcast awards is how you've created it. You've taken this idea and you've created this idea that it's a community. We're all the ones going through the same stuff. We're, we're, we we know what it's like being on a show where the microphone cuts out. It's a out. grind. Yeah. yeah, it's a grind. It is, hey, yeah. you lost a game. Should we should we even do a show this week? All those things, and and I think what's what's really cool. And if we've played any role in helping this, then that's awesome. Is that I I see a really great community of Husker podcasts out there right now. Small, large, whatever. You you're new. You're old. Um, I've seen a little bit of it all, and uh, and and I'll just say for you guys, I'm not just blowing smoke up up your ears here, but you you do have the coolest location, and goes, and I would just say the audio question. video quality, everything that you guys have put together, this is a this is second to none with all that. I mean, I'm really impressed. We appreciate, hey, we appreciate it. Definitely we, appreciate We feel very that. analog. And I think, and I think heard at this. Yeah, we're very, we are very analog to this, but I think, I think heard at also should appreciate this. This is a, you know, a little clap for her. Hey, we, here. yeah, we, all, we well, need to get, we need to get Chris Gorman or, or Bill in here. Like, I want them to like get the full experience MBNR. Like they see us on Twitter. Yeah. They look, you know, maybe they've listened. I don't know if they have or not, but like, it'd be cool to like, let them see what we do. Like, I I'm agree. glad you guys got to get a little taste of it. Like it, it's, it's something to sit down 
meet at a location every single week. Yep. You bring the gear. You guys, no matter what, win or lose, sometimes the losses are tough to talk about. Yeah. You know, they make you want to get up out of your chair and walk away. Kyle's done that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously, like we get, we, we get in heated arguments, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like every podcast, if you guys put out content, like give yourself a pat on the back because it, it's a lot of work. Nobody understands. Everybody thinks they're going to start a podcast, right? <laughs> and they do four episodes and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. Well, I only had 14 or I had five listeners and four of us are on the podcast. So right. I think I want to bet my grandma, Sally. I, ha- I have to tell you this one. We we had just gotten on Spotify, which means we filled out a form. There wasn't <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah, right? We didn't, we didn't do anything. We just filled a form we out. We signed with them. But we had, I, I, one thing I've liked to do over the years is we'll have somebody, a new someone new to podcasting will contact us and say, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? And if I can help them, I will. And it was some young kid and he contacted us on Facebook and he said, Hey, I, I noticed you guys are on Spotify now. How much do they pay you? Because I've been thinking about starting mm. a podcast. I'm like, Oh, well, oh, buddy. You, you have a long ways to go, <laughs> hey, son. Hey, uh, be, before that starts to <laughs> little guy. Off there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so naive. Yeah. Travis Justice came in here uh, oh, the first time he was on the show <laughs> yeah. and he's like, What are you guys making? Like 10,000? And we, we all laughed him out of the, out 10, of the brewery. Uh, yeah, a year? No, no. <laughs> and he looked at us kind of like we were nuts. We're like, We're like, 10,000? What are you making, yeah. Doc Talk? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, how much you guys? Why would even throw that? Why would even throw that? I do want to just before uh, before we move on. I do want to say that the Redcast. uh, We are. I would love to have the setup you guys have. We're not all in one location. We have Dave and producer Skip Redcast Rob. They're all out there in Colorado, Denver area. Boomer is in Lincoln. He easily could have made this trip with us, but we all knew he wouldn't because it's okay, Boomer. boomer right? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then graphic designer Swobes is he's he, making he's, mustache wax tonight. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, graphic designer Swobes is the seventh as well, and he's he's actually located in this area. He just couldn't make it here tonight, he's but he, he wanted to come down here. But he, old, that's. I mean, it's crazy though that you guys can expand that far, and it's even crazier that Husker fans expand so far everywhere. Oh, yeah, like I don't, I know that you used to produce a show before you went to Herd at one. I don't know if your guys' tool did this, but it was weird seeing like where your podcast is listened to. Like mm-hmm. the coolest part was is like we saw us getting like listened to in Iraq and Afghanistan yeah, awesome. and, and yeah. Africa and stuff like that. And so you think about it, and it's like Husker fans are freaking everywhere. everywhere. And the fact that you guys can do a podcast remote thank, thank god of technology mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and everybody's still just as passionate if you live in nebraska if you live in colorado if you live in freaking K- kazakhstan you know who knows right. <laughs> very nice <laughs> great success <laughs> go big red go big red <laughs> so yeah it's just it's awesome that uh you guys can do this and and you've had so much success since 2017 you said right yeah mm-hmm. yeah we started in uh spring of 2017 yep. three months after the last bowl game uh, we started. No, that was a long time ago. No different than I'm sure Man, how, how you guys started you and, and any of the other podcasts have started. You probably start because you guys are already having these conversations, anyways. Yeah, yeah. put a mic in front of us. Yeah, exactly. And it's your relatives and your friends that are saying, "Hey, you guys should go and do this. You guys should start up a podcast. It's super easy, right? There's nothing, nothing <laughs> right. to it. Just do a podcast." And so we started that Mac back then. You were living in Colorado as yep. well. Yep. It was a chance for us to, to yeah, exactly. just see each yeah. other. It was, it was it was mostly yeah, just a chance to chew the fat and. Because for years before I moved out to Colorado, Honk and I would go to like the Roca Bar or the Hickman Bar, and we just sit at a table. And it's our wives, bless their hearts. Like, <laughs> well, what you what you talk about? I mean, what do you mean we what you talk about? Like, we talk about Husker football. I'm like all night. I'm like. Yeah. Well, we covered the offense. Next week is defense. We didn't have that much time, hon. I don't, I don't know what the problem we is. Talk about the kicker. like yeah. <laughs> then, Jordan Congdon, but, I don't know. There's but, a kicking competition going on. Yeah. Honey. Hello? <laughs> like, but we would always have people at these bars, because it's Husker fans too, and they'd hear us talk and they'd just join us. And yeah. we just have these nice conversations, nice long conversations. You know, honky... Honky's like an encyclopedia of Husker knowledge, and and some of it are lies sometimes, but yeah. but they're really good at those two. But they, but for the most part, <laughs> and he would always be so um, accommodating to some really stupid opinions, mm. like just like I'm like, why aren't you laying into this guy about this dumb thing he just said? But you're so nice about that kind of stuff, and you kind of entertain it and feel. And I go, well, have you ever thought about it? Like maybe this, and, right? And and it was interesting. I'm a little more contentious than that, but it was interesting, like, <laughs> the, the, that persona it. that you, it's not a persona because it's who you are, but, like, even now on Twitter and now on, on the podcast and stuff, you're still that way, but I think it's probably makes, 
it more engaging for everybody too. Like it's probably best that it's not four of me on the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. For one, we'd have 23 followers on Twitter. I, I mean, and been, all their last names all, would be McGuire. I, I think, Jer- I think Jer- <laughs> see, I, I said we're kind of like the new kids on the block and like, you're like the Donnie, you're the bad boy. Oh, yeah. right? I got the Jared, ripped jeans. I think Jared on, on, on MBNR and, uh, and you for us. I mean, I, I, I think can, I could already feel that energy and oh, I appreciate yeah. it. You guys could do a spinoff. Yeah. And yeah, I think, and I think it would. Yeah. Be- I think it's because <laughs> is it because we're the old guys? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> cynic, cynic. You become a little more cynical the, the older you get, and I use right. that as a superpower, kind of <laughs> <laughs> superpower. <laughs> yes, you you've seen like, more things. I'm like, oh, this is the year we're using tight ends. Okay, oh, uh-huh. sure. I've right, never heard that before. Oh, you know? Okay, <laughs> Coach Roll, you want to do a fullback camp? Mm. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I believe it when I see it. You know? <laughs> yeah. What a joke. I hate how right I've been, though. You know, I can't wait for the year I'm wrong. That's but, what I said. Yeah. Like, forever. I'm like, just prove me wrong. Yeah. Right? I want to be wrong. Like, every year we talk about a tight end. Every damn year. Every we're doing it again time. this year. And I'm super excited. Yeah, hey, we're talking about again. two of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, three. Maybe I mean, three. 13 personnel. And then yeah. you got, yeah, you got the guy that can play running back and tight end. Yeah, and receiver. Oh, things. my gosh. Yeah. Hell yeah. But, well. but let's not forget that that was what Ramir Johnson was. Yeah. Oh, was the wide was, back? He was going to be the wide back last Oh, year. yeah. So wide, he was on the bench. Yeah. 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 He's, a, he's an ascending. <laughs> I remember Bill Bush saying he's an, a, an ascending player. I remember him saying that specifically, thinking, well, what to what? What's he, where? What's he going? <laughs> it's not the field. Is it press box? What's he doing? How far is he ascending? <laughs> Bring him back. He went, He ascended so much yeah. he did, couldn't go down we, to the field. We need to reel him in. You know, he was in the press. <laughs> like, where are you going? Put ascending. You need a descent. <laughs> so you know, so that kind of stuff. That's kind yeah. of what I bring. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, like, I know it's like your coach rule. You look like him. I mean, yeah, Jesus I've Christ. The, I've, got the, I've got the smock. We got the yeah, Walmart dude. brand Matt Rule on our podcast. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy. No, the smacks, the smacks and smooches brand. Uh, smack, and, smack, smack and smooch. There uh, you go. Shane yeah. Shane Laura out there in Elwood. Yep. I, I mean, I was just going to call him the great value or members mark version of Matt <laughs> Rule. But I, I shaved under Kirkland here, but, but I let Rule. the beard go a little long because it gets gray. And the grayer it gets, then I, I see it a mm-hmm. little more. There are photos I've seen where I, I get it. There are times I... I there's certain facial expressions I make where I'm like, okay, I see it. There's other times I'm like, I don't look anything remotely close to him. So it's like, it's, it's hit and miss for me at least. I can't grow a beard. So I'll never look like Matt rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all the reason. Let why alone right. like oh, a yeah. salt and pepper one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you the know, long, and he, longer it goes, I'm getting, some, I'm getting the, the salt part, I guess going here. That's so. good. Like it's, it's legit. Like you look like for it. sure. Like for you sure. can, even at the, through the facial expressions, you're, you're Matt Rule. I'm so happy. Well, you you're a- you're a rat mule. Yeah. Overweight, middle aged <laughs> white guy with a beard. I mean, there's a lot. I of think them. you're describing Matt Rule <laughs> for one. You need a good like Matt Rule impression though, because like Damon Benning has it down to a T. Talking oh, yeah. fast, talking fast like this. Man. Yeah. He has that like East Coast like. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring back the fullback. You know, <laughs> like yeah. kind of talking oh, fast. You know, yeah, I can hear that. I haven't I even that. tried the, uh, the the voice part. You need to. He does kind of a cocky thing where he kind of yeah. like turns his. Kind of, kind of turns his lips like this when he gets right. when, when That's he's, he's the, getting real cocky. It's the East something. Coast on him. I could work on that. Yeah, that, he'll like scowl sometimes when he talks too. Like he'll get like show his teeth a little bit, just like for a second. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like you got it's like a glimpse, but it's like mm. yeah. But it's that East Coast grit. <laughs> I, I, well, I, that that meme that you see on Twitter of him like, like staring at somebody yeah. outside there, like you, you can probably work on that too. Yeah. yeah when you he know? became a front runner for the for the head coach job, I was like, well, that's the one I want because. Uh-huh. <laughs> We might be able to get into some places we shouldn't be able to. Right. <laughs> I, I was yes, at, his name's Matt. Hello. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> so accurate. that's the thing. That's the thing. He and I, we, we've done little spinoffs. Now that we're on YouTube, you can do whatever you want, right? Absolutely. So we created, both of us are Matt, so Matt's rule, and we've created a little side show with that. I guess yeah. side show is probably a good way of saying it. Probably. Um, and uh, I think we're on episode four of that. We had uh, Glenn Snodgrass, the head coach mm-hmm. at York, on last week, and so he was – he had access to the the coaches clinic and the scrimmage and the the full contact, so we got a chance to talk with him about that yeah, and, that awesome. and get some insights on on that. We used to go to the coaches clinic for years. We've only said that a million times on the show to try to give <laughs> us some our, kind of it's credit. how we bona fide ourselves. You know? right. Right. Some, some credibility, yeah, yeah exactly. you big time, right? <laughs> I mean, we're coaching you know fourth. X's and O's and Z's and Y's. They don't they don't just let anyone coach fourth to eighth grade. Hello, right? <laughs> they really don't yeah. have to sign waivers now. Well, I mean, they have like stripers <laughs> on their helmet. Like I remember playing little league football. I was never a striper. I weighed like 90 pounds soaking wet, but 
You know, like the biggest guy on the team couldn't carry the football. That's all I remember from it. Right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm sure for you guys, it's 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 similar, like being Husker fans your whole life, but not really being part of the program. Because, like, I'm, yeah. we, we weren't players. Our dads didn't play. None of them are coaches. So you don't really have access. I'm not journalists, so that's not going to happen. But mm. but the thing with the podcast world, it, it kind of gives you that that key. Like, all of a sudden, you get to talk to It's a platform. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. why are we, we – it's so much fun – to have that kind of access, and it almost seems like I wouldn't call it input, but but a voice in it, and to be able to kind of bounce it off of some of these people that are really in the know, and that to me that's the best part about the podcasting because I, there's very few things um, outside of my friends and family that I care more about than Husker football, and and so to have any kind of like access to the program at all, it, it's 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 worth it to me. I'd love to win. No. Right. Oh, I would, that would be great. I would give up every snippet, access, anything extra that we get for having this platform to win football games. I, I would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I would, I would, would cancel the podcast if we were going to yeah. get 12-0 every year. Oh, I don't yeah. care. Turn the podcast in yeah. for, a, for a national championship. Yeah, I'll tr- yeah. take the right, <laughs> take the roadcaster with yep, you guys. Yep, I don't, yep. like, I'll, pour, I'll pour beer on it right now. Can I? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Only, bowl game? Only Sherman Ultra Shop Bowl? Only that Matt Honky, I mean, Matt Rule will get us to the promised land. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I will, de- I'll delete the Twitter account tomorrow if yes. that's what it takes. Oh, yes. If you told me we're going to win, we're going to win 12 games and, and all that, it, 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 it blows me away because we started this in we started the Redcast in 2017. Diaco was uh, the the DC and the new guy at that time. We were three months out of our last bowl game, and I mean, I, if you'd have told us at that time that six years later, you could have told us the success. And I, I'll say that in quotation mark the the success we've had as a show. Six years later, I'd be like, but we didn't make a bowl game? Right. <laughs> then, what? Then I, odds are, if you'd have told me that then, oh, but you'll have so many followers or this or that, I'd be like, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know that I want to How many times is Iowa going to beat us? What? what? <laughs> what? Iowa's going to have a winning no, streak no, no. again? Are you kidding me? You know, and, yeah. and that's the thing. Oh, I love that with Iowa. You know, it's so great that we beat them. Thank because, you. Because, <laughs> hey, let's take a second here. Hey, guys, remember that time we beat Iowa? <laughs> Oh, cries. I love this. I love this. Because, well, you know, we'd have an Iowa fan that would sit there and say, well, you know, yeah, but we beat you seven straight times. I'm like, well, join Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Texas. Right. Get in line, you're bro. Not, you're not the first one to you're, do it. You're behind the, Georgia Southern yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. Northern yeah. Illinois right. there, too. Yeah. Cool, bro. I mean, I... We're not even on. We're not even having the same conversations when we're having fights at times with other with other fan bases. Where the the fight that I would have with a, with an Iowa fan there has nothing to do with you beating us seven times in a row. You did. Now that's ended at your home. Mm-hmm. When you were supposed to win your division. <laughs> yep. but, but aside from that, was that the, the 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 fight that would always happen on Twitter? And and I do try to stay out of this one because it's just getting to be so old. But but. We're fighting that you guys don't have anything to put in the trophy case. And right. you still don't. And so you still, and you still unless, don't. Unless there's a trophy for beating Nebraska seven times. That is their trophy. That yeah. is their trophy. Yes, 100%. Your, there's if, seven banners someplace. Oh, 100%. Yeah. In the so, practice facility, ah. probably in the bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're making rings. You know, uh, our goal isn't to beat Iowa. I mean, it, it starts with beating Iowa. You got to end those streaks. We got to beat Wisconsin next year. You got to end some streaks that, yes. that have been going on for far too long. But that's not the goal. The goal is to go back to, to, to putting trophies into this $165 million facility that's getting built there that's going to be open to all of us and all of, all of Husker Nation out there to be able to walk in and, and to see. This is the thing. This was a turning moment for me this last year was the Oklahoma game. Matt and I went to it, and I've got, got season tickets now. Woo. And last year was the first year I did that. And hey, there you go. Matt, Join Matt, the club. Mac, there you go. Nice. We're tailgating. Oh, God. Yeah, I Here do we every go. week. Here we go. I, I, we hear about this every <laughs> week. I got season tickets. I'm a season ticket holder. Yeah? Hey, and then he knows now. Like It's kind of like like a, when you're like a Glock guy. You're like, oh, you got your Glock. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, like we're, we're brothers. It's like, yeah, you got season ticket? Oh, me too. <laughs> well, we go we go to the Oklahoma game. And, and you know, it, and when it was going, uh, the first half, they did all the same things that they did at the Oklahoma game a year ago in Norman. They 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 trumpeted out kind of the people from the the game of the century and it was the fiftieth anniversary and all these things mm-hmm. and then they bring out the guys that uh, it's the thirtieth anniversary of this team where ten years ago you saw them when it was the twentieth anniversary of them and I love that stuff I'm a history guy as I said earlier I love every bit about that history the the problem was what Oklahoma did a year ago is they they transitioned somewhere between the first and the second quarter they went from talking about the f- the fiftieth anniversary of the 
of the game of the century to here's what our 30 guys in the pros did last weekend in the NFL. And, and here's the, <laughs> oh, here's yeah. the all pro. And, and I'm like, and, and there was this transition from old to new and we've just been missing that. We, and it's not, that we've got some good guys in the pros right now. I'm not knocking that, but it's that, it's that lack of success over the last mm -hmm. 20 years. And we all, I'm not breaking any ground here, but we've got to get back to that. That's what? the challenge to Trev. That's the challenge to Matt Rule. How do you get us back to where we are a consistent nine-win program where the good seasons you're winning 10 and 11 and the bad seasons you're winning eight or nine? Um, how do we do that? We've had a couple of coaches since Osborne was even uh, retired. We've had a couple of coaches that were, were doing that, and we fired both, so that was, you know, not – there's reasons why mm -hmm. I get it. There are. Yep. But uh, we also, I think we have to learn from those moments too and go. Uh, I remember having a discussion with someone. It was one of the last years of Pelini and it was, I didn't love everything about Bo either. And I thought we, we got blown out in some games we shouldn't have lost. And I was, I didn't like some of the, uh, you know, sideline antics. He also won nine to 10 games. And I talked to somebody about that and they're like, yeah, but you know, you, anyone can win nine or 10 games. No, yeah, well, you clearly could, not. You could, we you found could that fall, out. You could fall out of bed and win nine games at Nebraska. That was a common that, argument. Yes, uh, yes 100% that was yep. common. And, and, and I probably kind of thought that too. I'm like, well, yeah, the, I, it, I the recruiting agree. handles itself. You know, the program is prestigious. This is, it's easy work. Wrong. Wrong. Really wrong. Really wrong. You did. <laughs> Super wrong. This yeah. is why I continue to say and, and believe, I really don't know anything about football. Yeah. I, I think I do. That was the, and then I'm always wrong. That was the entire trip back. The entire trip back from Illinois, and Rob was in the car with us too. Uh, 2021 Illinois, first game of the season. Week August, zero, right? Week zero. Hottest August. game in the fucking planet, right? Brutal. It was like field temp. I, oh, like I was at that was game with my wife. Oh. Fucking 106, I think, on the field. That By the hot. way, on Twitter, I saw some poll the other day, and it was like the top, you know, the the top college towns, Big Ten college towns, ranked one through fourteen. Nebraska was fourteenth. I didn't even argue that it's bullshit on its on its own merit. But they had Champagne, Illinois, Illinois number two. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, and I'm like, I won't say they're number two, but like, I went to a really kick ass tailgate, and I had so much fun. Really, that, that Red Grange area they have east of, of the the stadium is amazing. I think that we thought the same thing when we went there in 2019. The town itself, and everything. I was like, give me a break. But that particular day, I was really not enjoying the. Okay, now I'm just getting into the weather part of it, but it was a hundred and whatever and a hundred percent humidity and it was it was miserable and we we were told to sit down by the people right away the first we we're oh sitting boy. in the first row we i was like we haven't seen football live football in two seasons yeah because <laughs> because of covid Freaking this is vid. the first yeah. game post covid yeah. and like that sit cam down. taylor the cam taylor brett punt that he threw over his head yeah for his safety happened three feet in front of us yeah we were the second row right there in that that end zone and uh it, that should have told us something right away but it did. that was such that drive home, that was where it was so brutal. I don't know anything about football. What is football? Uh, what is life? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? Everything, everything I've said for four everything years is garbage. We, everything yeah. we thought they could every fix, they didn't. And they almost proved it all in one quarter. It was like, wow. Mm. Cam Taylor Britt, arguably yeah. our best player, just threw the ball over his head. And then they found out <laughs> later, we found out later on that, like yeah. that actually should have been a safety. You, oh, like, did yeah, it go they, in the end zone? Yeah. Like, or so, did it go out? Of the, I remember like the, they went back and looked at it like a, couple weeks later or whatever, and they're like, technically, it wasn't supposed to be called a safety. I don't... Oh, like a touchback? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so what happened is, as much as anything, is the first punt, the punter that Illinois had, I mean, Big Ten, I got to give all the credit in the world of their special teams units mm -hmm. and everything. The first punt, the guy kicked it down to the two-yard line right in front of us on the opposite end of the field, and then it bounced straight sideways. And Must goes be out, nice. It goes, How do you do that? Must yeah, be it goes, nice. It goes out at the two-yard two line, and I think Oliver Martin was the, the returner. So the next time, the next punt... They bring out Cam Taylor Britt this time, and I swear, mm. Dawson or whoever the special team, you know, they they just told him you catch this no matter what. You're not going to let this thing go out the two. They yep. had to have told him. Oh, that 100 percent. Because when they kicked the ball, if you're watching it on TV, you don't see what we saw. Yeah. What we saw was the ball is clearly going towards the sideline, like just leave it, let it go. And I'm seeing Cam Taylor Britt running as fast as he can. It looked awkward. He's running as fast as he can from the left side of the field to the right side of the field. I'm like, why? why? Just, yeah. just don't do anything. It's don't catch live. it. It's Stop not a live it. ball. Don't do it. You don't need right. to touch this thing. And he catches it, and then everything happens. And it was almost like he, he must have just been told just you know, do it. to do it. And, I mean, anyone that's ever coached punt returns, usually eight-yard line, you stick your foot on heel, the eight-yard right. line. You hit your heel on that, and you don't go any further back. If, if they kick it at the two and it, it goes sideways, God bless them. Good for you. You've got mm -hmm. Iowa's punter. But, oh. but short of that, you know – 
you, you've done your job. Just catch it if, it if it lands at the eight. Right. And so um, that was so frustrating. And then we had a, you know, we had a interception mm. from Cam mm. Taylor Britt. That yep. that was the one where um, uh, Taylor or Tanner hits the quarterback high, fifteen yard penalty, then taunts him, fifteen yard penalty. <laughs> yeah. Thirty. And, and, and this is game. Rob is with us. Bad at that point, it we'd also missed an extra point at that point. So it was nine to two, and we got that interception. And we get the interception. We're on their side of the field. Score touchdown. You're going to be up sixteen to two. Well, it doesn't happen. We get thirty yard penalty on us. Mm-hmm. They end up scoring a touchdown. It's nine to nine. Then we we fumble at the end of the first half, and they pick it up and they run it back. take it back for a touchdown. And we're down sixteen to we're down sixteen to nine at halftime. And Rob. Poor Rob. He's with us. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, there's there's a chance, you know, he was like going through all these like analytics. I'm like, I don't want duh, 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 duh. Yeah. this is wanna, Illinois. I don't want to hear any analytics. Yeah. We can win this game. Absolutely we can win this game. The problem is everything that we just talked about for eight months that we needed to see, we saw none of it. And yeah. that's where Matt and I were like like on the same yeah. wavelength of like, we're like, this is this is not good. It's gonna be a bad year. It's gonna be a bad, bad yeah. year. And well, it was and, even worse than I thought. And that's the <laughs> thing about doing like the podcast and being somebody as a Husker fan that talks about this every single week. You need something to talk about. So you talk about oh the analytics and you yeah. talk about what needs to happen and what we need to see, knowing damn well that we don't know what we're talking about. Right. And then it goes out there and literally none of it happens. The common <laughs> sense stuff, you're like, Yeah, like it should look like this. And it looks nothing like that, and you're like we, we we literally just sit around a microphone. I've never played football. I played football when in you know when I was a little kid. They put, me on, the, they, they put me on the defensive line at eighty pounds. I got destroyed. I quit. Like that was it. He's the guy that Cole Pensick destroyed. <laughs> right. That was probably that me. Sweet, yeah. But it's just yeah, it's just incredible. Like as fans, you're like, okay, well, this is what you'd expect to see, and then you get out there, and it's like, wow, not a single one of those things happened. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the off season when yeah. they're like. Yeah, we're going to have really emphasis on special teams. Yeah. We're really going to emphasize on uh, making mistakes or yeah. turning the ball over, take yeah. penalties, et cetera. You, know, you talk about all this stuff. You talk about it. You try to speak it into existence. And then you see that. You make the trip all the way to Champaign, <laughs> Illinois. Hot ass champagne. The hottest <laughs> game I've ever attended in my life. And then you see that in yep. person. Yep. And you're tailgating with people. And you're, they're like, yeah, there's no way you guys, like, we're going to lose to you guys. Like, I mean, we're going to beat you guys. And then they do. Yeah. Mm. It's just insane to me. And, yeah. yeah, the apathy of Illinois fans was the other part that was maddening about it. it was the like, ones oh. that knew a game was going on that day. The ones that did know. The other yeah. ones at the gas station. Why is everybody got red what, on? What I wonder. The, yeah. like, what the heck? <laughs> we lost to you. <laughs> but it's, but, and you know it's funny yeah. too when you do the pod, when you're doing a podcast when you watch a football game you kind of look at it a little bit different. You're trying to think sure. of talking points. Yeah, yeah. You're like coming along the way and like I'm watching this game like, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. If one more goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we talk about this, then I'm going to. We're talking about it. And I think I might have even said something like that on a show prior to it. I'm like, well, if we lose that game, I'm done. You know, and I'm thinking. And then they lost. Yeah, thinking. You know, in the, in the back of my mind, because everybody said we were going to be Illinois. Everybody. That, yeah. was, that was not a game we were going to lose. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, boy, I really don't like the confidence we have mm. on this. I don't know why everyone's so convinced that we can beat them. But. I'll go with it. Yeah, that's what that's what fight. truly sucks. Is yeah. like we have hope, we have confidence, and then four and eight. It's like, <sighs> well, and, and remember, this is something you know. I'm I'm pointing at you guys as as I'm pointing at us. We're all oh you know you got drinking Kool Aid and doing all this. No 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 no. It, let's not forget that like, five minutes before the Northwestern game this year against in Ireland, you have Kirk Herbstreit up there saying Nebraska is going to win the West. Right. No, let's not Ugh. forget going one and two. Terrible start to the season. We fired our coach. Like, every reason to say, of course Nebraska is not going to beat Oklahoma the next week. Who in their right mind would think that Oklahoma is going to come into Lincoln at, at, at one and two, and we've got a brand new head coach of, who's been here for four days, and we're going to beat him? Who in their right mind thinks that? Right. Well, Reggie Bush and, and uh, Urban Meyer said that on the field right before kickoff. So two of the four Fox guys did. I mean, <laughs> as Husker fans, I guess I would say, give yourself at least a little bit of grace here. Right. That, that, it's not your fault. It's not the podcast fault that that are you know certainly making you. That's true. Whether it's whether it's we a, know that's true. Whether it's a Kool Aid podcast or, or God bless you, God bless you that you know the it doesn't have to be all about Kool Aid either. All right. Yeah. You, you can you can be a podcast on the opposite side Kool Aid. It doesn't matter. The things that have been talked about with Nebraska, it, it's it's been national stuff. You think of that that off season of 2019, the, the, the off season of hope. We had Tom Chattel <laughs> on the show, just you mm, and I, uh-huh. talked to Tom Chattel right before the season. And God, I it, that was before we did video stuff. I hope this audio is burned. But the very last part of it, we talked about how lucky we were to have Taylor, uh, Adrian, Adrian Martinez because 
you know, I mean, how many Heismans is he going to win? I mean, right. Like, it, huh? we, we got him way huh? too early. Archie huh? Griffin. Archie Griffin has nothing on his Adrian. His freshman year was almost mad, despite the losses. But it, he was like, man, this kid's a gamer. This kid's a player. Like, we got him way too early. There's no this, way he gets worse. This is that who you. Happen. This is who you right. thought we would get in year five of of the Frost era. Not yet. Like we got him so early. This so is amazing. I, I, yeah, I remember you were saying that. I even remember you saying like it's almost like we recruited him too early. If we could have just got him in year three, <laughs> and by the way, really take off because by then we'd have probably stacked up about a seven win, eight win season here and there. It's like wow, <laughs> and wow. And wow. Well, well, shit. And Chattel yeah. didn't stop us. Just to be fair, no. <laughs> right. But no. I mean, our our right. third show. I'll still say this third show. The the spring of 2017. I made the statement about Diaco and the defensive staff. And I go, this could be the best defense. You, right. guys, you guys have had Charlie McBride on. I go, this could be the best defensive staff we've had since McBride. And I'm still, I still know what was going through on, on in my head. Individually, there, I wasn't wrong. As a group, yes. Trent Bray's an amazing linebacker coach. I love John Perella. Um, Bob Elliott, I mean, he passed away a couple months later. And, and at one of those coaches' clinics, he and I had sat down and had pork chops. Love the man. Yeah. Unbelievable dude. Great guy. Um, Dante Williams was part of that that staff. Yeah. Great staff of Diaco guys. Was Diaco was a Royals yeah. winner. Diaco was a Royals winner. There's no. You look at all that and you what go, a "That's a, what a great <laughs> that is a weirdo." But it well, at first <laughs> didn't come together. At first, like, yeah, maybe this guy's kind of weird, but like, like he's a good kind of yeah. weird. He like, seems like a genius. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's a genius. Like <laughs> yeah. we we can't understand him because yeah. he's just this far above us. Big brain, yeah. right? Big brain, <laughs> big brain. <laughs> hey. Lee, do you see the strain? It's like what? Yeah, the, the strain is that we're going into a break to get more beer. That's our strain right now. <laughs> and why are you tucking in to your sweatpants, Bob? Yeah. And why are you yeah. front tucking the clipboard, Bob? Yeah, and you're, you know, he's got holding the, the mic. You know, yeah. the you clips on here, like mic. because because before he coached a game, we were like, we love this guy. Yeah, he is the yeah. he's yeah. the guy that Mike Riley needs to. Yeah. Be good. Like, we're gonna, and we're I gonna run a four three in the spring game because our, our defense is gonna be so unbelievable real. come the fall. <laughs> I, I felt the same way with the offense last year and the offensive staff. And I, I think it's a I, Whipple maybe take him aside. Big brain. I have issue there, but but uh <laughs> but I liked Applewhite. I liked a lot of the guys that we I liked Rayola. And so Mickey, it Mickey. wasn't a killer to me when when he was being brought back. But uh I thought we had Mickey, obviously. Yeah, I mean, we right. had some really good individual coaches there, but when it doesn't come together, when the guys don't mesh, I mean, it, it looks like a mess. Yeah. Right. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to reset the cameras, get new beers, and uh, we'll be right back. Holla. Yep. Okay. Cash moves everything around me. Green, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, yo. Uh, we have a saying, no block, no rock. Thanks, Troy. Now, what? we were in our intermission. Yeah. And we were talking, and I don't know what you guys are talking about. Honk was doing his own thing. <laughs> now, Mac, Mac, you know, you're talking about used to living. Colorado. Mm -hmm. You guys would always go on these road trips yes. to all these away games yes. and disappointment galore, oh, right? Mm -hmm. Minnesota or Colorado. Which one would you rather Ooh. get a victory? Oh. Rather get a victory or rather Ooh. travel to? Nope. Let's assume that you're going to both. Okay. You have to get a victory in either Minnesota. I requested tickets to both, but I probably won't get either. <laughs> We'll see. I, or Colorado. Which yeah. one do you have? To, which one are you picking? I mean, this I, I, knee jerk reaction. I would say Colorado. Okay. Um, if it wasn't for conference, if, if it wasn't for the current streak, Minnesota wouldn't even be in the picture for me. But, but that's a great question. I'm curious what your thought is. Well, I am going to both. So, Right. We're going to Minnesota yeah, together. We're, 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 which one do you? Which Actually, one do you want to feel less? So. There's this selfishly, I guess Minnesota. There's for me there's two different things. Yeah. I mean the the pragmat, the pragmatist or whatever you you say in my pragmaticationer. That guy. <laughs> he, he, he <laughs> beat, beat Minnesota. They're in your division. All that stuff. But I, I I think that it's a legitimate issue from a a historical and a rival standpoint. Yeah, you absolutely want to beat Colorado. We were out there in in 19 with uh, 35,000 other you know people in red, and that was a I remember what a rivalry felt like. I haven't felt that way, even against the Iowas and all that. It, it felt that way with Colorado instantaneously. And if the other issue is that when we lost to Colorado that year, that was a problem because that was year two of Frost and that was year one of Tucker. And it was like, well, wait a second. Well, you, you can't just throw excuses out there. Right. Right now, we are a, a four-win program with Matt Rule coming in with a lot of good things going on. We've got 100 and some players on scholarship. we got to get that number down. And 
And, uh, you know, Prime has taken over a one-win program where he basically came in and said, get the hell out. I'm bringing right. everybody from Jackson State yeah. with me, and we're going to get into the Pac-12 and win. They shouldn't beat us next year. Right. They shouldn't. That is a that, – like, I would have more of a legitimate issue of, like, why are they beating us? Minnesota's got their own issues. We've seen coachings, coaches and players depart. I don't know right. what's going on right now up up in Minnesota. That That's their own issue. But specifically with Colorado, we should not lose to them. Mike. Should not. Oh. Mike. Minnesota or Colorado? So I, I, I love Honky's points there. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. My thing is, is this. Okay, Minnesota's kicked our ass mm. since yep. pretty much since we've joined the Big Ten, since since Bo's left. And I hate PJ Flex face and now his new face because he's got. <laughs> yeah, what uh, the? It, it's because yeah. weird. It was like a fishing accident or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really I hated know. his face, but now I really hate it his looked, new face. Yeah. I, I don't like his antics. Worse. I don't like any of that shit. Yeah. I love that all the, the people and the players are finally departing from this row the boat culture bullshit. Mm-hmm. And so to me, I feel like Minnesota is more important. So I would have to say Minnesota. It has, yeah. You have to win your conference you games. You, you have to start the season week zero again. Here we go again. Week zero. You remember the feeling. You remember the feeling, right? Winning the first game of the season means something. Yes, and I does. understand yes, it does. Colorado, the rivalry, et cetera, but it's a, it's a non-con game. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it does, but it, yeah. it doesn't, not in the landscape of yeah. it. You could still win the Big Ten and, and lose to Colorado. Yeah. yeah. You can't win You can't win the West if you're going to lose to Minnesota because you're probably going to lose to other teams, and you need that win. Yeah. Yeah. I agree uh, with Mike. You can't lose to Minnesota, okay, just to start off your year. However, <laughs> I can't live with the Twitter posts from Coach Prime after Nebraska loses to Colorado. I, I can't live with it. I hear you. I can't. P.J. Fleck, you know, he'll talk about, you know, our morale is better and our, uh, our culture, culture is better, you know, whatever, after the game. But Coach Prime, that dude will make a documentary out of beating Nebraska. <laughs> I can't. I oh, can't live with it. God, you're right about I that. Can't, you know, I can't. I'm trying, I'm trying to see both sides. I see both sides. Minnesota, first game of the year. Can you imagine Coach Rule loses his first game of the year? It's like... Oh, all the, the offseason hype. The, the balloon. Oh, right? Oh, my God, yeah. But then you think of Colorado. It's like, well, Coach Prime, he's coaching in a Power 5 conference now. Mm-hmm. We can't have, because they're going to lose at TCU. We can't have yep. his first Power 5 win be against Nebraska. No. Can't Because, oh, my God, can you fucking no. imagine? Well, th- that's the There's thing. no winning uh, unless it, you win it, both. It, if Dave asked us this question on the show, I would just say we're going to win both. I, like I won't even respond. Well, if, to the, if we beat Minnesota, we beat Colorado. That's the thing. I, I, it's I, like, I, can't I agree. Even, yeah, I can't even respond to the question. It, like innate, you know, in, inside of me, I'm like, we're just going to win both. <laughs> I love now, you. now I here's love the you. problem. Here's the problem with that. <laughs> He's so cute, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of that, I though. I choose neither. The opposite of that. Now, here's the realist. Like we call ourselves realism with an optimistic spin. Here's the realism side: is what if you lose both? And this is oh. this is what's terrible. We Ugh. are we are season ticket holders. We've Ugh. already made that very clear, right? We're, we are season ticket holders. And <laughs> could you imagine coming back to Lincoln, Nebraska for the opening, the home opener, and you're sitting at zero and two? That would be a really bad thing. And what it, what I'm getting at is that there is this. I I am all on board with what Coach Rule is doing right now. It, call it Kool Aid, call it whatever you want. I'm on board. I think he's done all the right things. And at the same token, there has to be something tangible. It's not just you're you're doing things well. We need wins. That's what he said this week, though. We need victory. I love it. And and we're talking about a one-win team last year, and we're talking about, I don't even, I'm not sure if it's an upset to go up to to Minnesota and win, but. I would say it is. I would would call it an upset. I I would think it's going to be, you know, we're we're probably not going to be favored. Minnesota. Minnesota, No better than a coin flip, I don't think. I heard that Minnesota right now, and it was still early. Eight point favorite right now. Wow. Wow. Boy, I would take that. You Eight should. I would you should. Because we don't that. lose more than seven point games. You're right. So, I, mean, I would take uh, that. No, it's a no, new no, era, though. Is. Former head coach Scott <laughs> is gone. <laughs> I had to get that in there at least once. Yeah, yeah. We need yeah, to do this whole. You guys have done this that before. I like, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. We've done worse. The tangible thing is that you have to have some early success if you're doing all the right things. This is something I've said an annoying amount of times over the years, and I truly believed it every time I said, but it never, never came out. I go, if you do the right things and you do it a long enough time, good things are going to happen. And for years and years and years, we thought all the right things are happening, and so it's eventually it's going to lead to wins. The reality is, is if, you're, if it takes a long time to win, if you need a seven-year run, runway, which we, we heard back in 2018, if you need that, then you're probably not doing the right things. You should be able to win 
not I'm not saying year one we got to go ten and two. Uh, people forget Nick Saban went six and six and lost Louisiana Monroe at the end of his first year right. at Alabama. People forget that that it's great of a turnaround that Pete Carroll had at USC. They still lost to Kansas State two years in a row, and they were six win program the first couple of years. Oklahoma with Bob Stoops went f- seven and five, but in year two they yeah. did the unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. That first year, if you, if you told me right now we go six and six or seven and five or or whatever, I, I get it. I, I I totally get it. But if we're doing the right things, the wins shouldn't take that damn long to happen. We've lost to get teams that we've had way more talent than, and, and because of just bad coaching decisions, bad moves on, on on our part, we've lost it. They didn't win it; we lost it. Right? We've yeah. kicked we That's kicked the punt to the wrong side of the field against Michigan State when Ugh. we held them to thirteen second half yards. You, you know, we did that. <laughs> right? We did, th- and, and I can go down the list. We Unreal. had back to back penalties Unreal. before the the first snap of the Oklahoma game. Adrian Martinez is seeing first and twenty before he touches the ball. Right. We did that. We had five penalties against Northwestern in twenty twenty with on the offensive line where every offensive lineman contributed. They each had their own penalty. Good for them. Those are not good things. Brothers. No, it's my turn. No, my turn. I, I had the... No, it's... And you've got to... And what we need to do is stop doing that. And I guess this we is the, really the, the inner stop. coach of me is stop doing... The, stop beating yourself up. Play good football. Let's be smart. Let's let's win the special teams battle. When we get down to the one-yard line, I asked this to... to uh, Glenn Snodgrass, your coach last week, mm-hmm. and he was at the scrimmage at, at the coach's clinic. I asked him when they... When they were doing the uh, oh the red zone drills, uh, and they got down the one yard line, do, you know, we obviously got in a shotgun, right? And he's like, no, no, they actually had a they had an eye formation. Wow, that, they that got an eye formation happy. to throw a bubble screen. And what? Yeah. Did, <laughs> and Max, Max, what what did he say? What did he say when they uh, they fumbled in the, uh, in oh, the red zone? How hot they got? Yeah, Matt Rule, you know, and Matt Rule has been awesome at, in front of the the cameras. He is a great ambassador of this program. Mm-hmm. He, he's almost Mike Riley nice. Mm-hmm. And basically Snodgrass was like, yeah, he went off, but, but in a, in a good way because turnovers in the red zone, that matters. And yes. I, I've mentioned this in 1995, Frazier and Beringer have a battle for who's going to be the starter after that 94 season. And the, as the story goes, it came down to one turnover and one practice, one scrimmage. Mm. Osborne was grading everything, and there was one extra interception that Beringer had, and that was the difference between that guy starting. That to a coach like Osborne, maintaining the football, not turning the football over, was that important. And how many times now have we seen that one fumble, mm-hmm. that one, the little thing, right, Mac? Oh, yeah. It's that one, it's that, that one little interception, that one little mm. turnover, that one penalty. At a time, you just you can't one bad have that. snap. Sutterfield, one bad snap. Sutterfield, a couple weeks ago was just like, "Look, I'll put my dog out there if that means the ball's going to be safe." Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said, I don't care. He said, whoever, "Whoever protects the football the best is who's going to start." Yep. Yeah. You know, I love that. Like there have been some people on TikTok, whatever, saying like, "Well, you're telling me that the other staff didn't care about not turning the ball over either." Well, no, they they probably cared. Yeah, but it feels like could be totally wrong, but it feels like. There can be an emphasis on not turning the ball over, right? You hear Satterfield, he said multiple times, if you t- <laughs> I'd rather play my dog than a human if that means he's not going to turn the damn ball over. Like, I think there's a difference in emphasis mm-hmm. yeah. than maybe what the previous... Like, I don't recall Verdusco saying, if you turn the ball over, you're gone. Yeah, no. Like, I, maybe it, this is just the rose-colored glasses, but I don't remember. No, they never. Couple. They were the best practice program of all time. They never turned the ball over in practice because they had the best practice that we've ever seen. Week after week. <laughs> week after week. So <laughs> they, they couldn't have turned the ball I over. I kind of forgot how he used to say that every yeah. day. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you hung out with Verduzco for 30 minutes at a yes. coach's clinic. How was that? And, and he was kind of, he was pretty cool, actually. He, he was a he's lot a cool of guy. Fun. He's the Diaco of offense, right? He's kinda the crazy was. mad kinda genius. Was. The funny thing I was that with with what Verduzco is he would openly admit that he doesn't really understand the offense and he he's all about just like the mechanics of throwing mm. and you know and with the rose colored glasses I had on then I'm like that's adorable yeah he's all about <laughs> mechanics and focusing and making the quarterback better hell yes <laughs> that's truly all we need you know but now I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you Realist know, with an optimist. Yeah, and I'm like, truly, that should be enough. I mean, obviously, he was an Iron Western, like a hidden gem for his entire career. You know, it's like, 
<laughs> Who's sleeping on this dude? <laughs> His thesis was on throwing mechanics. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know? But He's a reaver for most of his life. Yeah, but it turned... Yeah, no kidding, right? There's a, I don't think he was well, that no, Irish. It was, oh, not Iowa. I'm sorry. No. It was uh, Northern, Northern, Northern Iowa. Iowa. No, 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 he was a panther. He was a panther. So The uni dome. Yeah. What we probably Is needed right? was a was a quarterback coach that knew what plays we were running. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. We probably I, needed. Uh, that. I think that's. Yeah. A, but you, I, I think with Frost, he's like, "Hey, Adrian, where'd you put your foot on that last pass?" I'm like, "Well, right. <laughs> who gives a shit? You threw it to the wrong guy." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some of it with with Frost, it was the game management piece, and so yeah. a perfect example of that would be the Michigan game from two years ago, where there's so much emphasis that, that comes down to the the turnover. We talked about how important uh, the turn turning the ball over is, mm -hmm. and that that uh, you know if Martinez just hangs on the ball at the end. That is that's that's important. That was an important piece. Yes. How about the beginning of the game, the first drive? We get all the way down to the three yard line, and it's first and goal, and we have three shots at the end zone. We don't get it, and we go for it on fourth and don't score. Right. We don't we don't kick that field goal. We don't go up three nothing, which would have been the first deficit of the season that Michigan would have had all year. Put another team under stress and pressure like we've felt. When you're down, you you play differently. All those things. That's a game management issue, and that's something that that Frost at times just failed at. And I don't – look, this gets back to next season. With Frost, you can make the argument the guy just started so poorly. 0-6, we had lightning bolts against Akron. There was bad luck. All those things. I get it. Bad luck with the injury to, to Adrian. But it was that we started poorly. And it felt like he was always trying to come from behind. Right. And that's the thing In that if, everything, you, if, you're you right. do, if you're doing things right, my, his, my history of Nebraska, my historian in me, uh, I'll go back to 62 with, with Devaney. When Whoa. he got here, we were 20 <laughs> that was years. a long time ago. That's a way back we, machine right now. We, we were 20 years of bad football. A lot of coaches we went through. Had some big wins along the way. But, but at the end of the day, it wasn't. Wasn't top notch Nebraska football. Mm -mm. He gets here in sixty two, and they go nine and two in the first year. They beat Michigan in the second game on the road, and he he identified that game. He was from Michigan. He goes, "That's a game that we can win. It's not a great Michigan team, and I think we can go in there, and we're gonna. It's gonna get this confidence to the players. It's gonna get confidence and bring confidence to the fans. That's what I think that Mich that Minnesota game is. You ask Minnesota and Colorado. I don't even want to look at Colorado right now. That's week two. I want to beat Minnesota. If we, beat Mi you. if we beat Minnesota and Colorado has lost to TCU, F them. We're going to be 2-0. Fuck and yes. We're, and we're going to be, and we're going to come back to Lincoln, Nebraska, 2-0, and, and, and ready to play Northern Illinois or Louisiana Tech, whoever that is. And can you guys Tech. imagine sitting in your season ticket seat? Uh, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine the electricity? Because oh. like we were, we were cut short, obviously, in the previous era um, for welcoming a new coach into the stadium and, and whatnot. But can you imagine having the first home game under a new era being two and zero oh. for the first time since Mike Riley. Yeah. Well, and being Holy four shit. and zero oh when Michigan then comes here. Yeah. I mean, if we're two and zero oh and we've got, I don't know what the order is. No, 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 Louisiana tech doesn't matter. Shouldn't. Then we should beat those two. Yeah. I, I mean, this should, we should be well past the era of losing to Troy, of losing to Georgia Southern. Yes. Losing Northern Cause we Illinois. have an adult in the room. Mm -hmm. And so like you guys are, former coaches, right? I've said this, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with this particular coach. Obviously, you guys coached uh, on, a, on a lower level, right? But I've made Fourth this... Fourth to eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? And guess what? Slightly lower. Span. And I don't want to take that big of a jab, but I have said that... Andy Means, the former head coach at Millard South Football, would manage a better football team than former head coach Scott... Because... Because... On the fourth and three on the three-yard line, guess what? He would just take the points. Yeah, take the points. Yep. The, he doesn't have to go full big brain all the time. If you're right? up by two and scores, you don't do an onside yeah, kick. It, oh, that's shit. Oh. Prime example, right? To me, Kyle. if you're a coach, you're a coach, right? Mm -hmm. You understand the situational football, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I feel like Matt Rule, you know, the, the on-brand version of you, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, is uh, like I just feel like he's a, the adult in the room. He's the coach. He's a football coach. He's an X's yeah. and O guys. We had Damon sitting here with us the other day, and yeah. he's sitting here talking Great about show. By the way, Great show. Gosh, guys. the X's and O's. The guy's like a total football nerd. Mm -hmm. And to me, and like that has to translate to something. That has to translate to situational football, right? Right. Well, and like to your point I hope so. about just doing the right things in the off season. I want to just get back to the days where we can look at the schedule and say, okay, that's a win. That's a win. Yeah. That's a win. Yeah. That's a 50-50. That's it's, a coin flip. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it hasn't been like that in 
five, six years. Like it, it just drives me crazy that mm-hmm. we always sit here and we're trying to do these predictions and stuff. And last year got into this big heated argument mm-hmm. where I almost wanted to walk out of the brewery because these guys are like, no, like there is no game on that schedule where every, it's a win. Every team looks at you and says, Nebraska. That's a win. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah hate Georgia, that. Georgia Southern walks yeah. in and kicks the shit out of us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have the longest. They could look at it and go, well, Nebraska will give us that game. Yeah. We have the right. longest bowlist streak right now of any P5 school it. out there. And yet, from a blue blood perspective, we look at these teams and say we should beat them. I, at the beginning of every single uh, season, so in, in August, we will post these um, Twitter polls and we'll get tens of thousands of responses across all of them. He's not bragging. No, no, because it's it's twelve polls. Small it's twelve points. games. You're so. right. Okay, see, I see. Uh, not per uh, poll, but it's not, okay. not one poll. Not one poll. <laughs> uh, but it is the flex just oh, got smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> division, division. But anyways, um, but what it is is that it's we go game by game and we just say who's going to win: Nebraska mm-hmm. versus Minnesota, Nebraska versus Colorado, and you go down the list. Now, if you ask any sane. Husker fan. This gets into that whole, are you a realist? Are you, a realist? Are you an optimist? What are you? And, I'll, and I'll ask you, are you a realist? And you go, absolutely. We're seven, I, We're going to go six and six next year. We're going to go seven, five. Cool. I'm not trying to argue that. Okay, let's go game by game. And when we go game by game, <laughs> go nine and every three. time it's 10 and two. Yeah. Right. Every time it's 10 and two by 75 to 90% victory margins uh-huh. on every game. And then, and then it will be... Wisconsin will beat us 53 to 47%. And Michigan, okay, we'll give them that uh, 60 to 40. That's how it goes. Right. right. And we end up at 10 that's and 2. Wild, yeah. Even though, and that's what the exact same people all asked them before. If I could talk to any one of them individually, they would say it's 6 and 6. But those six losses that we're going to be, there's no way it's PJ. Right. It's no definitely not Colorado. Right. No. There's no, and, and they can go down the list it's not and the tell new you every head one, coach at Illinois. Yeah. Right. Every Georgia one Southern? Of those yeah. It's yeah. not any one of those six, but but we are going to go six and six. And it's this, look, I love it about Husker Nation. Don't ever change, by the way. Please don't change. That That's the thing that keeps, why are we building $165 million facilities on top of the unbelievable facilities it's that we be, already have? It's because of the fans. It's the fans. And it's one of the reasons I think that the, I don't know what your guys' take on Salt Street is. To me, it is so important. It's important because it's the thing that we control. I can't control if we're going to kick a field goal at the end of the first drive against Michigan. I can tell you and scream at the top of my voice that we should. We should get a lead. Points are good. Let's all say that, everyone. Points are good. Points, points are good. Are just yeah. to, hey, just, just imagine. Just imagine. <laughs> wow. You take God, the points. He's that. just showing off now. Just He's this. just showing off now. This is amazing. <laughs> but, like, points are good. And, like, and so I – but as a fan, I can't control if we're actually going to go out there and kick it. Now, Coach Frost, maybe one of the things that kept him over the years from doing that is that he can't control whether his kicker is going to go on the field and make that 30-yard kick. Right. We saw it against Oklahoma. But, but whose fault him. is that? I'm, I'm just – I mean, he recruited right. him. 100%. Yeah. Right. Look, when Osborne fired Callahan, if you want a dissertation on how to build a football team, and I'm telling you, everyone here, go on to YouTube. Well, you're on YouTube right now. Yeah. Watch the go, stay you where the, you are for now. When you get done watching this, <laughs> go over. Then later yeah, on, leave this, or put, we could put a link in the in the in the uh, description, description box. But watch the video of Osborne firing uh, uh, Callahan. He gives a dissertation not on firing a coach, but on what is important to a football team. What are the things that you need to do? And and he talked about at that time with Callahan, it was if you didn't fire Cosgrove, um, would that have or if he would have fired Cosgrove, would that have saved his job? And Osborne's like, no, the the head coach is responsible for the offense, the defense, the special teams. That's what the head coach is there for. Right. And so why would it be any different right now? I could be the the biggest rose colored, you know, Husker Homer that you have. And I can't sit there and go, well, well, the rules apply differently to frost. Frost was the frost was the head coach. As far, when we, the year we didn't have the special teams coordinator, guess what? He's the special teams coordinator. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't yeah. have one, if you don't have it, that's, 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 that's your problem. Who we, that's yeah. who we wanted to be the special teams coordinator. We said it and we're like, Hey, you know who yeah. has the best special teams? Places that the head coach takes pride in it and yep. does oh, it himself. Beamer. Yeah. Urban Beamer Meyer. ball. Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer. Was Urban, Meyer. Yes. Bill, Urban Meyer. I was reading a thing where he talked about how he would be on the sideline and he would look on the other, because he wasn't dealing with offensive defense. He could just focus on this. When it got to be third down, you know, the other teams on the field, third down, he could look over there on the other side of the field and he was, he was paying attention to where their, their coordinator was and he'd watch is their activity. What are they doing? It was just that, that level of attention to detail of it mm-hmm. at the, I don't care if you do it as an analyst. Honestly, I don't, 
I think you could be successful at I don't even I'm not even saying you have to have a special teams coordinator. Have an analyst. That's fine. Then somebody needs to be assigned to doing those things. Okay? Make it a co- make it a coordinator, make it a position guy or just make it a standalone coordinator like you have right now. I don't care. We've seen it work all these different ways. Dan Young at Nebraska used to be a half offensive line coach and he was the kicker's coach, which was essentially the special teams guy. I don't care. The head coach has to make it a priority. Osborne made it a priority. Um, the great coaches make it a priority. 100%. Absolutely. And I if you don't, that. you're going to be really, really crappy at it, and it's one-third of the game. And Yeah, and it's going yeah, it's going to lose you a lot of games. What? Oh, a lot are of you games. kidding How me? How many times? Think about games. that. Think about all the one-score losses we've had. <sighs> right. And, and just think of the, the Oklahoma game two years ago. Just imagine. We, we lost by seven to Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> we lost by seven to Oklahoma, and we missed, an, we missed a field goal from dead – 30 yards right in the middle, and, and, we block. Had, and we had an extra point blocked and returned for two points. That's six points mm-hmm. given away in a seven-point game Yep, Good against on. against a top-ranked team. I got to go down to their downtown Norman Bar area afterwards and talk with a bunch of, this is what I love about, about college football fans, um, talking with Oklahoma fans afterwards, and they're like, man, we're going to go in the SEC. We're going to kill them. We're just going to kill yeah. Lincoln Riley. <laughs> They're Nebraska fans. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln <laughs> Riley has got this recruiting down. We got top five classes. You guys didn't even get to see this. Uh, the court, uh, the guy just won the Heisman Williams. Whatever. Caleb, yeah. Caleb. He's like, this one guy was telling me, you didn't even get to see Caleb. He didn't play. He's this retro freshman on our team. That dude's going to be killer for the next three years. Oh, my God. And he's right. <laughs> he's right. But your coach is going to leave and go yeah. to, to USC and take him with you. I mean, if you don't like what's going on in college football, wait two minutes and it'll probably change. Right. <laughs> um, what we need right now in Nebraska is a little less change for the first time in 100%. a long time. I think Trev is the right guy to, to lead that consistency. And I think Coach Rule was absolutely the right hit. We tit. We, we tit, tit real hard. Tit do you know, so you know hard. what? Do you tit as well? Do you tit? I, I, trust in Trev? Do you trust in Trev? Oh, yeah. I was gonna, I, <laughs> he's like oh, thinking yeah. like, do he's I like, tit? Do I have he's to? Like, I, looking, it, did I, I have do two it of again? them. Did I do it again? My wife's been telling me about I'm that. sweating, so I'm, my shirt's wet. I mean, we're in our, we're in our 40s. We, I, yeah, you tit. <laughs> I tit all the time. I tit all the time. We tit hard on MBNR because we trust in Trev. Well, you know, you you guys were talking about Coach Matt Rule, and we're basically asking ourselves, is he and his staff, are they good enough to lead this team to like three or four more wins per year just for just focusing on the little things, mm-hmm. the things that go overlooked, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't even, damn it, I'm trying to think of where to go with that, but. Um, it's it's the golden question, right? Yeah, it's just the little things I've gone overlooked for. It seems like twenty years. And here's the thing: we've got like years. we've got like beaten dog syndrome for like, sure. Like we we keep hearing all the great things about Matt Rule, right? We keep hearing, we keep seeing the videos, and we keep hearing all the right things that he's saying in press conferences and stuff. And that is why we're here talking about Nebraska football and what our expectations are for the rest of the year. And who knows? Maybe we don't go two and zero, and then we just sound dumb because yeah. it's you, you, we we just it's we, happened before. We listen. <laughs> we have seen that, yeah. and, and I do remember where I was going to take this is just establishing basic adult things like instilling confidence in your team. Mm-hmm. We heard Matt Rule come out this week and say that number fifty four, Bryce Benhart, he's an NFL guy. Yeah. As if we're the crazy ones. Yeah. Like, we haven't been watching this O-line for the past. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, <laughs> I didn't see him fall over on PAT. Like, right, and, like, uh, Matt Rule, don't be, <laughs> don't gaslight me, yeah. Coach Rule. I've been watching Gaslighter. Yeah, he's like, not you, Matt. <laughs> not, not you. you. <laughs> I've been watching this, okay? But it's like, he's doing just the basic, hey, you, you can do this. Mm-hmm. Just... I changing his body and making, you know, we've heard a lot of things about the sure. O-line. They look different. Yeah. Of course, we hear that with every staff. Every staff, new strength coach, this new is, workouts. I think a lot of that comes from, though, like, you know, he keeps saying, like, this is the best talent I've been around. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's, he's putting that on his players, and he's saying, look, we did all these great things at Temple. We did all these great things at Baylor. He's like, and I'm telling you, you are better than what I've worked with in the past. Well, and let's think about that. He didn't have three. He wasn't gifted three top 100 recruits on the offensive line at Temple. or Baylor. No. That's what Corcoran was. That's what Prosker was. That's what Benart was. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying those three guys played like top 100 linemen in the last three or four years. Absolutely. But, but we have a lot of no. issues there, right? 
And Mac, you talked about it all last offseason. This is you're just getting technical. What Matt is great to watch games with. He gets into the technical piece. He's a big running backs guy. But like even offensive line, he'll talk about bend on players and 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 Evan Cooper. I, the coaches have said the same thing. I, I you're my Evan Cooper. You're, you're the guy that's like <laughs> he's it, up till four a.m. watching film. <laughs> well, and just and seeing things out of a player like this guy, and it will be one little thing on one play. This guy bent this one way. This guy caught the ball this one thing. He, he put his arm like this. He did something. And it's just one little thing. And that's the thing, Evan Cooper, when he's watching film, that rule will talk about, I want to watch film with Evan Cooper because he sees things that I don't see. Mm-hmm. And with Ben Hart, and the your whole offensive line last year, your whole thing was it was the bend. These guys, look, they, were, they were lousy. They're boxy. Look stiff. They were they boxy. They look stiff. They look stiff. And so what happens when you have coaching changes? You have new strength and conditioning guys come in. So – one of our, uh, I'll give a plug out to Alumni Hall, one of our, our sponsors, we were doing a pipeline jerky event at, at Alumni Hall. And it was, this is back in December, and Bryce Benhart's there. And so was Kevin Williams, um, who had been on the show a, a year ago, and it was about a week before he had ended up going into the portal. But I was talking with uh, Kevin Williams, and I just asked him, you know, what's the difference right now in strength and conditioning? And he was not going to crap on Duvall. He was like, Duvall got us strong. He did everything we needed him to do. But, but, you know, this new staff, you can just tell there's a big priority on the mobility and, and getting these guys to bend. Then I was standing next to Ben Hart. He's the biggest guy I've ever seen in, in person. He's just yeah. gigantic. He's ginormous. And yet you see the photos and the videos of him right now in spring, and he looks like a different guy already. He's lost 30 or 40 pounds. How big of a difference is that? I don't know. But what I can give is some historical uh, reference here. When Pelini got here, think of that defense that we had in 2007. It was horrendous. We gave mm-hmm. 60 points and a loss to Colorado with guys, these terrible players like Philip Dillard and Dominic and Sue. They played horrible. right. <laughs> terrible guys, right? We get, fire them all. Get rid of all these dudes and bring in a bunch of new dudes. No, how about we work with them? And Dominic and Sue lost weight. Dillard, they had him as a 270-pound Dill- no yeah, guard. Dill- I don't even know what the hell they were doing with them there. Right. But, but the difference that James Dobson brought in, I'm not even knocking Dave Kennedy. Kennedy probably did what he was being asked to do. But when Dobson came in there and, and they, they worked with defensive backs and they said, these guys look stiff. These young defensive backs, Eric Haig and Prince Makamara and those guys, they look stiff. We're going to work on their hips. And guess what? Those are the guys. We had Cody Glenn on the show. And Cody Glenn made the move from running back in 07 to, to linebacker in 08. Yep. And he talks about the strength and conditioning differences. So go back to what you talked about last season. That offensive line looks stiff. They didn't look, they didn't look good. Just in general, I don't care if we were running Whipple's pass offense or the run offense I wanted to see. They didn't look like they had the mobility. And if that's what Ben Hart brings now, if we can have a healthy Prohaska, we get Nuuli back. Yes. We bring in Ben Scott from Arizona State. You start to do that, and it's like, okay, okay, you've got some pieces to work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's crazy to think about because the O-line is the easy whipping boy. For sure. Right. Like, even though they got better, like, all they, year they, they actually did get got better. better. The Iowa game, Des, they, they, despite yes. them being stiff, they actually got better. Fifty four got better. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. They got like they they played better as a unit. Yep. So I mean, I know the whole Donnie coming back thing is for Dylan, but in reality, like you no, know, he was doing his job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and get, keep that unit together. Yeah. I, if they're yeah. getting better, keep them together. And you hope that the head coach and the OC will actually be on the same page as compared to last year. <laughs> I mean, do you remember last a power year? struggle. I mean, well, yeah. you had Whipple yeah. doing Whipple things. Yep. And at the beginning when Whipple was hired, it was like, okay, he's experienced. Mm-hmm. They had the great offense at Pitt. Yeah. They had Kenny Pickett mm-hmm. and the Addison wide receiver. Yep. Like, of course, like, yep. come on, it's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. But then they were butting heads. Yep. And Mickey Joseph, I don't know, with him and Whipple weren't on the same page. But you're hoping with second year of Riola head coach and OC mm-hmm. are like this. They have a, they're on the same page. There is a unity of purpose. You're hoping that the O-line, they are probably, are they like the most experienced unit on this team? I mean, they've played yes. a shit ton Absolutely of snaps. Absolutely. And are. then you factor in Ben Scott, who's played 2000 snaps. It's like, could this O-line be the yeah. strength of the team? Maybe not depth wise, but they're starting five. It's like, well, you guys could do something here. Yeah. Hello. For sure. For sure. And, and, and you're right, too, because it wasn't just Frost and Whipple. You hear about Riola and Whipple. Like, mm-hmm. we talked to um, Milt Tenniper years ago, and uh, he, was, it was, he, was, he was awesome, actually. He was fascinating. But one of the things he talked about when Frank took over as the head coach, 
and some of this just speaks to the genius of Osborne, and th- and that can't be understated. You know, like people are like, well, well, Osborne called plays and was the head coach. That's, I'm like, well, he's different. It's different. He's yeah. literally it's a different shelf. Okay? Probably the best coach of all. Exactly. So, so like, th- right. I'm not going to get on Frost because he, he couldn't do both. That's not a big deal. But what Osborne understood as the head coach is what the offensive line had to do, and you couldn't call certain plays in certain times because you're putting your offensive line under duress. And Frank would have a game plan kind of lined out that Tenerper would have to go back through and say, nope. Nope, 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 nope. And then they kind of got it figured out as it went along. I think that's a lot of what happened with last year. And I think I think you could make an okay offensive line look really, really bad if you're not helping them at all. And if you're not moving the quarterback around a little bit and he's standing right. there and the Statue. defense knows where to t- tee off. And if all your run game is is just turn and hand it off in obvious situations, Jesus. it's going to be hard to look good. Yeah. But I get the sense – that with whip or not with with a uh, rule being the head guy, there isn't even the potential for dissension amongst his staff. Oh yeah, I'm the guy. You will do what I say. We're not butting heads. Right. We're butting heads. I got the wrong guy. You're gone. You know, there's right. there's no butting heads. This is how we're gonna do it. I will teach you how I want you to do it, and then I will trust you with your coaching skills to do the thing that I just taught you to do. Right, and that's. I, my hope is that that is what exactly we've been missing, and the and then he's the right guy to do it. And that and the, mm. the the thing that gives me the most confidence is that he has done that at other places. This isn't this isn't make believe. Yeah. Right, he's a program builder, turnaround, however you want to say it. The guy's got a track record. That's kind of where I lean towards the most hope. So like we talk about a, a fair amount. Like I won't be that surprised if we have a good year. I really won't be because. Right. We were close to having good years with Frost with all the little mistakes we were making along the way. Yeah, it, it all the drama. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a stretch to believe we could have beat some of those teams well, if a couple things bounced one way or the other. Think about this, too, is that along the way, you know, because change is always what's best, right? We always have to change. You have to change. You have to change. For instance, you guys call yourself No Block, No Rock. Why? Walters. Well, yeah, right. terrible, absolutely. Terrible coach, right? You got to get rid of him. <laughs> right. You got to yeah. get rid of him. After, right. after yeah. year two, we get rid of the guy. Why are the Bengals where, hiring him? Where what is are you he doing? at right now? He's at, he's at the Bengals, and he's, he's coaching <laughs> players, that, and he's in the, you know, in the Super Bowl and all that. I mean, that's – and look, you know, at some point, you've either hired the right people or you're not. If you've hired them, then let them do what they need to do. They, you have to have that trust between them. I think it's something that you're already starting to see with rules. He's created a coaching tree that's quite impressive. Mm. Uh, McGuire, that's the head coach down there at Texas Tech. He's brought guys out of the Texas high schools into the, the coaching ranks. That's impressive. I mean, when I look at Osborne, one of the, the, the few things you could probably say, I don't even want to call this a knock on him. He didn't have a coaching tree, much of one. One of the reasons was because nobody left. That's how much they liked him. Milt mm-hmm. Teneper could have been a Hall of Fame coach somewhere else. Uh, Charlie McBride could have been a Hall of Fame coach somewhere else. Solich only needed the opportunity to go somewhere else, and his name's on a field. Right. So, you know, th- these are – they were great coaches. They just chose not to leave. But if you want to if you want to go somewhere, if you want to come somewhere, learn how to coach and learn how to be a pro and have an opportunity to go somewhere else, Matt Rule has shown it. Yeah, he has. 100%. And, yeah. I, and I love because you had Whipple and Frost come – you hired Whipple kind of out of nowhere, right? Kind of, yeah. And here's the thing about Rule is all these guys that have come back to work – with him at Nebraska, yeah. they want to work yeah. with Matt right. Rule. Yep. Like, yeah. it's not like anyone's forcing these guys nope. to come. They want to work with Matt Rule mm-hmm. yeah. because there's – They're almost like robots. Like, when, when you talk, you could talk to Garrett McGuire. You could talk to any coach, Ter- Terrence Knighton, anybody. They sound just like Matt they Rule. Do. Isn't it weird they do. how when you guys are – when everybody's in sync and they all yeah. believe in the same thing mm-hmm. – you get the same message. And who, what does Matt? What does who does Matt Rule sound like on day one? Who did he sound like? Who talked about two months or prior? Trev. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When, yes. Tre, when Trev, yes, absolutely. I mean, when you want to start talking about the alignment, when Trev fired the day that he fired um, uh, Frost, there's a lot of similarities. I'll go back to the when Osborne fired Callahan in that press conference. Some of the things that Trev talked about, Trev wasn't crapping on Frost, but we need a grinder. Yep. We need to win the lines of scrimmage. No hobbies. There's, no hobbies. There are just these certain mm-hmm. things. These are things that are important. And if if we're going to have any success with, with rule, here's my my realism coming in. I, I'm optimistic. I mean, my God, we're going to go 12-0 next year, right? <laughs> but, Hell yeah. But if we, if we don't still, if nothing else, rule comes in here, and whatever success we have with rule, he had 60 days of a 70-day search where he wasn't working. Yeah. Where he had an opportunity 
to to listen to, to Trev out, to come to a game day weekend in Nebraska, bring his family with him, be driven yeah. around by Trev, have every opportunity to say, nope, I'm, I'm getting paid out by the Panthers and I don't want to do this, I'm going to go golf. Yep. He had every opportunity to. And so by the time he took the job and his family said, Dad, you need this, those are the things that if we're going to have any success with him, I think it's that. He had opportunities. And, you know, when they announced right away, hey, we have a $7.5 million coaching pool and, and we ended up not using it well because things happened joseph would have been a part of that first pool didn't probably happen. uh pete's would have been a part of it pete's. didn't didn't happen right but that didn't mean that that doesn't mean that we need to immediately crap on mcguire yeah no. because right. he's a young guy it doesn't mean that we immediately hired bad coaches in the replacement it just means that you know what he already had his plan i the, the coordinators that he's brought in the experience that we have from syracuse where, where white was from they have satterfield to come in from the sec I mean, come on. Right. This is. Yeah. Yeah. If if it wasn't for the battered fan syndrome that I feel like we all have. Yeah. I, B, I would, BFS? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel, I know where I would be with this, with this team. I, I would be, I would be a little more bullish on, on what I feel. If this was 2017 and we just started the podcast right now, mm. instead of it being Diaco, if it was now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, the dumb things I would be saying right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, it'd be yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it probably wouldn't be too far off, like from what we were saying. I mean, well, we got, and, hope and, springs eternal right now. What, yep. it, what have you heard that you haven't liked? I, people, people that criticize Matt Rule right now, and I'm, it's not even that many people. It nope. can't be. Yeah. But for those few, what has he done yeah. right, since he's been hired by Trev? What has he done at Nebraska for you to be like, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Agreed. Really? Yeah. You better fan syndrome is real mm, for sure. Mm. However, everything that he has done so far, everything, everything, and You're we right. we are the anti Kool Aid, right? Podcast. We are. We pride ourselves on that. But you can't tell me that there's there's not even one thing that you could go. No, I don't like that. No, I, we we take a lot of pride in like analyzing history and the evidence, right? Yeah. So the the heated conversations we had about keeping Scott was all about like <laughs> it was all about like well Sorry, guys. we're close. I love it, I love it so much. <laughs> this really side do. this side of the table was always uh you know look we're close in a lot of these games you know it could it could happen we don't want more change everything like that like whatever that side of the table was like well history is telling you that it's not going to get enough. any better we've seen enough yes. So right now you're looking at Matt Rule. Look at the evidence. What is all the evidence that you have on Matt Rule? You have success at Temple. You have success mm -hmm. at Baylor. You have him doing all the right things. We're not even going to talk about Carolina. Getting back in the fold with Dylan Raiola, you could say it's the coach. Yeah. Even if you don't he get was, Dylan. It, he, the, what, the work that he did to even be in the conversation exactly, is yeah. so impressive. It, ex exactly. I have no issues with how we've recruited Dylan. And since, the, since fact, rule. the fact right. that he got Dylan here, you might end up with other guys, even if Dylan doesn't commit to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. The other guys that took visits with Dylan seem to like it in Lincoln. Yep. So, yes, the, it is ridiculous the amount of work that a man put in without even understanding the tradition or anything before that. He's just like, I got to go to work. Yeah. He, yeah. he knew what had to be mm -hmm. done. He's done it before. He embraced and, Nebraska more than previous head coach and, did sorry in some ways he just and, did in, in my, some ways i, I would 100 in my agree. argument to you earlier when you made the statement like a year ago year and a half ago you know to keep frost my argument to keep frost wasn't that he he deserved it or he warned it his record didn't warrant being kept around no but there are things that could be learned by keeping him around number one trev got a whole nother off season to to yep. observe things mm -hmm. and when you're trying to raise the 165 million dollars for that new facility and you're walking through the training table and you're seeing people not eating at it, it seems weird because we're building a new training table yeah mm. that's one of those and, and and that's something that trev hit on and then now you got to go back go back to that alignment what's one of the first things that that matt rule talks about we should probably be eating together. We should probably use these facilities that we're all putting mm -hmm. our hard-earned Husker fan money into. We should probably use those facilities that we're building and saying that we need. And, and But that that takes time. And if Trev fires them too early, then maybe you've upset a certain part of the fan base. And yep. and so it what it never had anything to do with his record warranted no. keeping him. Absolutely oh, yeah, not. That was the easy part. It, right. That the, was the easy and, part. And I've said this right. forever with firing anyone. I don't care who you I don't care who you fire. Mike Riley, it doesn't matter. Firing people is the easiest thing in the world. It's easy to fire someone. The hard part is what do you do afterwards? Steve, we learned that with Steve Peterson. I, I'm gonna. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw it out there. 
I, I wasn't beat up when Solich got fired on day one. I wasn't. Because if we went back to that time, and everything everything's a freeze frame time. And Jared said this like, like literally I mean, last we, week. We had, in, in the previous 28 mm-hmm. games, when he got fired, in the previous 28 games, we were 16 and 12. We had lost a third time out of four years. Or when you say it that way. To, yeah. Kansas, <laughs> to Kansas State. We lost three out of four Remember years. Remember Al Robertson doing four, his thing? We lost oh, four out of yeah. six times there. Like, it was, now, it was a different it was a different expectation, right. but it was just, it was this idea that we lost to teams that we hadn't lost to forever. Osborne never lost to Oklahoma state, Kansas or K state three of the, the seven opponents he would play in the big eight. He never lost to one time in 25 years. And, and so it's lost them all to all. What, 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 what the heck is wrong with this guy? But I think as we've learned, oh, sure. I think so hindsight, so it's probably did a pretty good job. It took over a really tough situation. Yeah. I mean, he took over after the best, College football and head coach of all time, especially you go, at that after time. a historic and, run. And you too, go seven and coach. seven in 0-2. Yeah. I said yeah. last week you go seven and seven. A lot of people got scared. Like, whoa, yeah. what is? Yeah. I've never seen a five hundred season. Yeah, since Devaney yeah. before Devaney. I was born in seventy seven. I never saw four losses until nineteen ninety eight. His first season when we lost Arizona in the Holiday Bowl. That's the first time we lost four games. Mm-hmm. When I was at the Colorado game in two thousand one, and they put up fifty mm-hmm. points, not the sixty two, right? Before. The fifty. I had never seen 50 points on the board against a Nebraska team. So when people, this is the thing that, and some, I get these questions, but sometimes people say, who's a better quarterback, Eric Crouch or Tommy Frazier, or this or that. I don't know how to compare them because I know Tommy Frazier never looked at a, a scoreboard and saw 60 points on the, on the <laughs> right. And had to compete true. against that. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Crouch puts up 36 points. I think it was against Colorado in 2001. That should be enough to win on the road at Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you give up 62, you're going to lose games. And, and, and so there are a lot of things that were just different and, and I'm not even exactly sure where I'm going with this, but, but it's just, Things have changed, and, and the <laughs> expectations are different <laughs> but, now. But also, different. but also, what Osborne did to try to put in pr- some perspective of how unreal it was, the consistency that we had from 1962 to 2003 is insane. Mm-hmm. To, to go 255-49-3, and three, to average more than 10 wins a season over 25 years, to average less than tw- two losses. That tw- 49 losses is, is a big number. Because it's 1.999. It wasn't two. You go right. to the southwest corner of Memorial Stadium, and there's a plaque there from 1984 that says that Bob Devaney and, and Tom Osborne went back-to-back 100 wins in 22 seasons. It's the fastest it's ever been done in college football history. That just doesn't happen. They have 200-plus wins between two coaches over a 22-year period because you always have a shit coach after a great one. It always happens. Bud Wilkinson leaves, and you have a couple crappy ones, and then you eventually get Switzer. And, and our problem... And we're guilty of this. We had Devaney, who's an unbelievable Hall of Fame coach. We had Osborne, who's an unbelievable Hall of Fame coach. Spoiled. And then we have Solich, and we are so spoiled that we looked. And I'm looking at myself here. I said it earlier. I didn't mind that he got fired. I was 100% wrong. And we had a third potential unbelievable Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame coach. coach. A guy yep, that, 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 again, has his name on a field. What used to be Peelan Field out there in Athens, Georgia, is now, uh, is now Frank Solich Field. And, um, and, we didn't know what we, we didn't know what we had because we didn't want to gravitate to mediocrity. Ugh, don't say that. And we didn't want to be Iowa. And we have, we have hey, learned what mediocrity. You're is. supposed to look like Matt Rule, not C. Peterson. Yeah. So don't even be nope. bringing that. <laughs> no, gravitating. No, we are back. We're back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't give you a chance to mute that. So. And for all rose color, <laughs> hey, for all the rose colored glasses about you know the new coaching staff, and well, of course you're happy with everything he's doing, and you know it's all going to look great. Well. I look over at Colorado and what Dion's doing, and I think Dion might end up doing okay. Sure. But the if but if he was our head coach and the stuff that he's doing in Colorado, I would be irritated. I no would too, hundred percent. Yeah, so I'm hundred percent. I don't like I don't like Dion comes off as bigger than the program. Dion comes off as like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fix everything that's ever been like acting like Colorado's history is meaningless, right? For people that kind of wanted to get him here, I'm like, that would never have flown. That would it, never. If fly I'm here. Joel Klatt, I'm like, fuck you, yeah, Dion. Exactly, fuck like, you. You're, Rashawn's, well, I guess Rashawn's son's dead. Sorry, well, I mean, that's a bad example. The, well, the, the, they're, <laughs> but it was a Heisman winner. The, the old lineman yeah. that just left uh, Fort Collins that is going to Tennessee. Um, Gage something? Yeah. You know, I, and I think his dad liked Nebraska. I mean, it would have been somebody nice for us to get, yeah. but to lose an in-state guy, that that's painful. Yeah, and I don't know in Colorado. I don't know when it's like that. I've never lived there. I wasn't a CU fan, but it's like not great. Nebraska, it's a big. <laughs> he has. He's. Li- he actually lived in yeah. Fort Collins, but right. It's just, um, it's just okay. But what they've done here 
to Ed Foley to come in here. When we had Glenn Snodgrass on, he talked about what it meant to have those coaches come in here. They've, they've been to over 100 in-state schools. When you see all those things and understand the history of Nebraska, that's crucial. It's important. And a Dion, I don't know that Dion would have come into Nebraska and respected it the same way. I also think that same kind of thing is the thing that was going through Trev's mind when it's who do I, who do I hire? Mm-hmm. Who's going to be the right fit here? It's not about just wins and losses. Mm. Who's going to be the right fit that, that can be here for a long time and be successful here for a long time? I didn't know the first thing about Matt Rule, honestly, when he got hired. Nope. And everything that he's done since, I mean, holy smokes, I guess I could be been wrong before, but I'd be blown away. I, th- I think the guy has just been, he's knocked everything out of the park. I yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 Dion, I mean, look, we beat the drum. A lot of fans beat the drum that the cool videos and shit and the hype don't mm-hmm. win you football games. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Dion is the epitome of cool videos yep. and cameras following him around and the hype and everything like that. I just, I totally agree with, with just, you. With just a little touch did of you, nepotism. Did you, you guys see, <laughs> right. did you guys see the, the latest uh, highlight <laughs> that they dropped today? Of, oh uh, yeah. Is that the completion against the fourth grader? Yeah. yeah. That was like, awesome. I think you guys coached him, didn't you? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's one of our guys. <laughs> I was like, poor kid. I mean, whoever. I mean, hey, like, Dion's it, taking over a difficult situation now. No, and, I don't give a fuck. And, and the bad thing is, this goes. This is like a Callahan era statement, but like you know, that was a good throw against air, right? I mean, I, yeah. we would go to coaches clinics and watch good passes against air. There wasn't even a fourth grader covering a guy. You can respect the pass. That was a good pass I saw in that throw. Sure. Yeah. But I'm also like, okay, but that these are linemen without pads on the on the legs. This isn't real football being played, and you're completing against a fourth grader. So it's like. Why, why? No, I get why we're guilty of this a hundred times as Husker yes. Nation. Yes, I get why you're doing it, but like you're not going to impress me right now. Dude. <laughs> right, and, and and this goes back. Talk about the right fit. It goes back to what Coach Rule said the other week, where he's like, "We'll do hype videos. We're 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 as guilty of anyone. They know the but business, our, but our hype videos are going to be about work." They're not going to be about, you know, quotes he anymore. We don't, we don't need to throw. All the time. We don't need to talk about. It's a real it's smooth quotes. shade, but he throws shade at Dion all the time. Yeah. Oh, is that? I, I, I don't know how dumb. else to interpret I'm, it. I'm, I'm not dumb. in Madden. I'm, I'm not, not in Madden. Madden. A little bit. Yeah. Matt Rule is in Madden. I'm not going to hire celebrity coaches. I'm like, okay. I'm not going to have a, call, yeah. a camera follow me yeah, around exactly. everywhere. Our right. videos are about Even the work we do. You know, like. Right. Who are you talking about? I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we're the only ones doing work right now, too. Let's, let's just be very clear. Yeah. We're, the one, right. we're the only ones lifting. We're the only ones practicing. Of course. Nobody else is oh, doing yeah. anything. Nobody yeah. does that. Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Yeah. Right. No shit. Kirby. No shit. <laughs> Kirby. It's not like Speaking a of, video you, game. <laughs> you guys are prepared for Dylan to not commit to Nebraska, right? I you're, don't co- even, you're prepared. I honestly don't even care. I, okay. I, there's good. so the many games. With Dylan for me is, is I know for sure he will not win us a single fucking game this year. And yep, I, I'm truly only interested in this year right now. There and, it is. And there will be another top quarterback, and, and we might not get him either, but but we need to win this year. And mm-hmm. the, the amount of and, and, overreaction. And the race is never over with anybody now. With NIL and the transfer portal, I don't give a shit if he even comes here. We could still get him. You know, right. A year from now, sure. Yeah. Treat, or two, yeah. Treat yeah, exactly. people right. Treat people right, and you'll always see people come back. So think about Flores at Gretna. That it was a, it was a com- complete cluster that we did not – Offer the kid at the very least, offer him right. Mm-hmm. And so, what happens? Rule comes in, offers him at the last minute. Of course, we're not going. I would expect not to get the guy. Why would he, why would he renege on a, on a on a offer that he's had for over a year? He shouldn't, right? But just offering him and just doing the right thing. Guess what? If it doesn't work out, at Oklahoma State. We've seen this eight million times. If it doesn't work out there, then we're in the. I think in the battle to get him back a year from now. Same thing could be said with with a. Uh, uh, Rayola, but your point's 100% taken there is that 100% Rayola is not going to win a single game for you next year. And if Jeff Sims is anything like we hear, and he's got two years of eligibility, we've got guys on the staff. There's a, there's a chance. What if I said Rayola is not going to play, even if he's, even if he comes to Nebraska? What mm-hmm. if I say he doesn't play f- until 2020, you know, five, three years from now? Well, yeah. that conversation, you're like, is he even going to stay? Yeah. 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 Exactly. He's go somewhere else. Now you get into that. Yeah. yeah. And so. So right now, let's worry about the guys we have on the team. This is the thing. This is but as, we a, can... as a podcast, you have to have at least uh, two to three minutes dedicated to him. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. If you're going to rule, do we hit it? Throw, throw, no, we, have, we got three more seconds. Okay, good, good, good. And, and, <laughs> and this is, this is a ten, this is a 10 minute segment. Throw it on YouTube. Put a thumbnail of, of a rail on it. Just say, is rail wow. coming? Yeah. And everyone's and going, wow. Rail commits in Nebraska question mark. Yeah. 10,000 views, right? Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, but but to answer, I don't. I, I I would I would actually be shocked if he if he came to us. But yeah, but thrilled. I mean, it's absolutely thrilled. And I and I do feel like regardless, he and his dad have have given us a fair shot to re-recruit him. Mm-hmm. And I, I I can't hold anything against them. They brought in a lot of good players. You know, we've gotten a lot of good press just off of the fact that we're in the hunt. That yeah. and that opens eyes, I think, to a lot of recruits throughout the nation too. So, um, he he did us a solid. If he doesn't come here, and if he ends up going to Georgia, I'd have a really hard time blaming him. If oh, you, you know, I mean, if he went to USD, where that guy I, churns out number one picks and Heisman. Heisman. Honestly, yeah. if he picked just, Nebraska, it'd be like, why? Exactly. Why? Well, why? I mean, that's the thing is that <laughs> nil from yeah. a recruiting standpoint. I, I I've always kind of crapped on the the stars and the over the the ranking pieces of it. Right. And, and even I, this old curmudgeon, I even have to sit there and go, okay, I get it. This is a top you know, recruit in the country. He's, he's and, one of one. And, yeah, like, it's it's so rare to have the top recruit in the country be a quarterback, wants to come to Nebraska. His dad was a, he's a legacy here and his uncle's on the staff. I get it. I get the interest. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But I also don't, that's not the thing that's going to excite me. With my season tickets I have this year. Yeah. Um, Wait, you have, we're not going to see. Do you have a yeah. drop for that? You're going to see yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to see him play this year no matter what. No, so. it's weird. It didn't, it wasn't included in my season ticket package. <laughs> he should have. He's not he on should the, have he's not been printed on the ticket. Our no. season ticket should have Riola, No like, football package or any, like no football card with okay. all of his no stats. You guys keep talking about the season ticket holders. You guys go ahead. <laughs> you All see right, that done then. No, you see that picture with Trev and, and Dominic, you know, with <laughs> with his jersey and the oh, and yeah. the poster frame. Oh yeah, yeah. The- it's like, why isn't that on my season ticket? <laughs> Come on. Man. No, that's you know what? I love your answer. He's not playing for the team this year. Mm-hmm. We gotta focus on this year. Yes. I love it. Yeah. What a what a great note to end on, by the way. Had a Beautiful. Great time. Man. Yeah. Great time. Uh, right. So this is the portion where we ask you guys, hey. Even though you don't need to, plug yourself. Plug yourself. <laughs> Where do you want people to find you if you want people to indeed find you? I'm going to let you take the lead. <laughs> yeah. Mac. Yeah. No, Mac. No, not honky. <laughs> Mac, Mac, Mac specifically. You know where we're at. Do I know where we're at? I know where we're at right now. No, 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 no. You, <laughs> you can find me in my yard. You'll be able to find it because it'll be the greenest motherfucker on the block. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, he you know what? He loves this because he can, he can say all the words on this show. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. You can find us at Go Big Red Cast on Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Instagram, Bumble. we apologize. We're not good yet. TikTok, I need to learn a lot from you. I need to learn a lot from you. <laughs> Stop it. On how TikTok works. But um, it's, it's actually, a chaos. I don't need, I I don't need to learn it. This. Actually, Rob needs to. I, I can't. So like the mock right my now. brain can't I'll teach, anymore. I'll teach Mag over there. <laughs> yeah. Te- teach someone else. But um, Old, old. But yeah, we're, grow- we're growing the YouTube page and we interact a lot on, on Twitter and my parents are on Facebook. So that's, uh, that's kind of the My parents are on Facebook. Hell yeah. That's why we and I'm Facebook. going to get a text from my mother if she hears this about my words. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you send her the link. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Mom. I love you. <laughs> like, subscribe, five star review. Um, okay, guys. Well, I mean, you can find us on at NBNR Podcast, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We are there. We are there, unfortunately. Can, can I thank you guys? Seriously. <laughs> hey, I mean, thank this. you. I you mean, drove from no, Lincoln. We no drove lot, up the street. <laughs> I'm de- I, I, we've interacted with you guys for a while on Twitter and stuff, and that's a. I, I talk about the love-hate of, of Twitter and social media and stuff, and I there's a hate sometimes. But the, but the love is, we don't meet each other if it's not for that. No, that's true. Right. And, very, very and true. even that's being cool. on the Herdat Network, which is great. We love Herdat and, and, and pro Herdat. But even with that, it's, it's, good it's the interaction that we've had on that. And then to get to meet you guys in, in, in person, this is what makes us fun. This is what rejuvenates me. And I'm telling you, no block, no rock. This is this is the show, man. You guys, Jeez, you guys are yeah. you guys are in in a freaking brewery. I don't even know. I've got <laughs> lights on me. I've oh, got we professional know. <laughs> microphones. I mean, this is. I've had a great. I've had beer. Giving me, kind of, I hey, love you guys. We'll this have more. Fun, we can have more after yeah, the show too. Just yeah, like, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got here at five. We're in no rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the kids are oh, be down in bed. Yeah, in the, <laughs> kids are already in bed. So. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, mine will be in bed in twenty minutes. <laughs> Redcasters Red watching. Follow No Block No Rock. Subscribe to them. Man, this is great. Well, hey, you we know appreciate what? the plug from you guys because yeah. you guys got your 
healthy following. <laughs> we could use some of that on yeah. coming they, our they way. They got into Twitter, I feel like, before people use Twitter. They had to. I'm The amount of followers you guys have, it, it, it's, it's because of the amount of work you guys put in. But We're so, that old. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Spread the love. Yeah. It's like Twitter created the day Twitter was started. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, to your point, though, the, the relationships that you build around a table like this, like, like just podcasting and just hanging mm. out with other personalities that put themselves out there mm. every week, like that's the best part about all of this and we always thank our guests like it really does mean a lot that you just take oh. you know two hours i mean i guess six if you count <laughs> <laughs> what you travel, guys time, travel time yeah time. yeah <laughs> shoot uh, it, 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 it truly does mean a lot so we appreciate you guys being Absolutely. here cool. yeah Absolutely. and we'll see thank you back here if you don't come back on the episode or another podcast with us we will see you here for the nebraska podcast award show Absolutely, yes uh so if you guys are listening and you love the go big red cast make sure you are voting for the fields that they are um, nominated for. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same with us. Go vote. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that you guys take some hardware. I, I've, I mean, you guys probably take everything, but well, <laughs> Red, yeah. Redcast Rob is going to get us the Kool Aid. I'd be <laughs> shocked if we don't get the Kool Aid award. And by the way, I, I honestly hope we do. Not for not for any personal reasons other than it will drive Dave nuts. <laughs> yeah. If Dave if, if Dave Rob knows that we, well no if Dave the, knows that the podcast he is on won the the Kool Aid Kool -Aid. award oh it would drive me crazy so please <laughs> please vote for us for Kool Aid Kool Aid yes just to make Rob happy and just to drive Dave nuts between <laughs> yeah. the two that would be that would be I amazing love it. all right all right guys well what do you say we sign off yep I'm one of your hosts Jared Hall Mike Delaware Kyle Byers Matthew McGuire Honky as always go follow. Big Red Cast, follow No Block No Rock podcast. Beat Minnesota in Colorado, please. In GBR. GBR. 2 0, please. <laughs>